Uh, it's nine o'clock. I suggest we uh, start the meeting. Uh, the uh, chair is, is not here and the, the vice chair will be participating remotely, but it's not on yet. So I suggest the commissioners in the room vote on a chair to run today's meeting. Sandy Brown be the chair for this meeting. Uh, the chair from last year isn't here and she was the chair. I'll, I'll second that. I, can I call that vote? Okay, I, I will go ahead and ask, and we'll need to do a roll call since we have people participating remotely. So um, we have a motion and a second for me to chair today's meeting. Uh, all those, or I guess we'll do a roll call, sorry. Commissioner Sandy Brown? Aye. Commissioner Randy Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Montesino? Commissioner Hernandez. Commissioner Alternate Chifrin. Aye. Commissioner Alternate Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Alternate McKeithen. Commissioner Alternate Ginny Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Alter Commissioner Pegler. Yes. Commissioner Alternate Kiddos Carter. I'm sorry, I just joined. I'm not sure what I'm voting on. Uh, the question is uh, whether to accept me, uh, Sandy Brown, as the chair for today's meeting. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Alternate Lind? Aye. That passes unanimously. All right, we um, now I'll ask about the roll call. Um, we sort of did that, but I think we also need to go through the roll call for attendance. Commissioner Sandy Brown? Here. Commissioner Randy Johnson? Here. Commissioner Montesino? Commissioner Hernandez? Commissioner Alternate Schifrin? Here. Commissioner Alternate Quinn? Commissioner Alternate Ginny Johnson? Here. Commissioner Pegler? Here. Commissioner Alternate Kiddos Carter? Here. Commissioner Alternate Lind? Here. Commissioner McKeithen? He will be arriving shortly. And Commissioner Scott Eads. And Commissioner Alternate Joe Clark. Okay, you have a quorum. Thank you. <laughs> we will now consider AB 2449 emergency circumstances requests for uh, remote participation. Chair Brown, we have three commissioners that will be participating remotely. However, they will be using the regular uh, Brown Act. All right. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to oral communications. This is an opportunity for any member of the public to address the commission on items that are not on today's agenda. And we'll take... Uh, the first person here in chambers, Mr. Peoples, you're up. You know, I haven't been to this uh, city council building for years, probably 10 years ago. Last time I was here was when Iowa Pacific, who was going bankrupt and leaving the ban uh, leaving our program, so to say, and Progressive Rail was doing a proposal. And that same proposal, um, Dr. Rob Quinn and, uh, Mc, and um, Supervisor Koenig were against that proposal because it didn't make sense. It basically gave away our property 
our taxpayer our property to this Minnesota company. We lose all, we gave them all rights. We have to pay for everything for them to operate. And they actually left a couple years later because it, there was no freight. They have 30 car, uh, rail cars a month in Watsonville. You need about a thousand a month for a, a viable program. Um, RP, Progressive Rail didn't, they actually left Watsonville and now they sub that work out to Roaring Camp because it's not a viable business. This organization owns this valuable property. It's your responsibility to make sure that property is used appropriate for the community. And it hasn't been used for 10 years. You built one mile of the trail in 10 years, and it costs three times as much per mile to build a trail, a 12 foot wide trail as it does to widen highway one. There's something wrong with the equation here. That's one of the reasons Guy Preston left this because he was frustrated because he tried to get you to do it the right way. And that's what happened. So I'm back here 10 years later, witnessing, we told you so, thank you. You. Could I, uh, I'm concerned there are a lot of people in the audience. There is likely a lot of people who are gonna to wanna to speak. I think we need to get the clock going so that we know it. That, is that working? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, uh, next up. Uh, buenos dias, good morning. Mi nombre es Aurelio Gonzalez, and I'm from the city of Wattsville. And uh, I'm here today just to thank staff uh, of the RTC for all their diligent work that they've done uh, on this project. I think they've done extraordinary work, and I think they brought a lot of information to the, to the commission <clears throat> to make a decision. Uh, they based it on equity, and they also based it on uh, the disadvantaged communities we have to acquire funds to be able to move forward on this project. Now, uh, in 2013, the RTC agreed to establish the Monterey Bay Scenic Route. Uh, with the rail right next to it. They had an opportunity back then to make the great decision that they were going to accept that trail next to the rail, and they chose to. Um, now, unfortunately, the County Board of Supervisors doesn't believe in equity and only used the disadvantaged community to accomplish their goals in North County. As a South County resident, we feel kind of disgusted by what occurred at the County Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, so, but again, I'm here just to say, thank you staff, don't get discouraged. All your hard work is greatly appreciated at South County. I know they make you uh, work twice as hard to accomplish what should be a really simple process. So thank you again, staff. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Bye. I, I'd like to just make a, a, a quick comment here. I want to remind folks that this is oral communications and we do want to get to our uh, main item as quickly as possible. So um, everyone gets to speak on that. Um, so anyone else for oral communications in the room? Do we have anyone online? Oh, here we go. Thank you. Hello, we're Schilleimer. As the trail project moves forward, we have heard from several people of the public that have ex expressed the need for a bike trail to increase bicycle safety. In the interest of creating greater bicycle safety and pedestrian safely, including but not limited to disabled people such as myself that often use a wheelchair to get around, it would be great if at Swift Street, Fair Avenue and Almo Avenue, the vehicle traffic had a stop sign, not just a flashing pedestrian light. Also, one of the street's button, buttons to activate the pedestrian flashlight is on the edge of the sidewalk, making it slightly unsafe to activate, since part of my chair is protruding into the street so I can activate the flashing lights. I noticed that the place, places along the trail in that area that the vehicle traffic has a stop sign are in the residential areas. 
which is also where the vehicle traffic already drives at a slow and appropriate speed. I understand that the speeding that usually takes place on Swift Street, Fair Avenue and Almer, and the possibility of an installation of stop signs is a topic that might be better addressed to a different audience. However, placing the buttons of the flashing pedestrian lights to be activated is certainly something you all can consider. And I furthermore, I'd like to remind you that doing anything with the rails, pulling them up and doing anything with them that is not something that is on a guided system would greatly um, affect my safety and the safety of other disabled people. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I will say as the city of Santa Cruz representative to this body, I will take your comment uh, to our staff. Thank you. All right, um, others in the, okay, you're up. Good morning. Thank you for having this meeting to seek community input and hopefully to speed the process on approval of and timely construction of trail segments 10 and 11 of the coastal trail. Yeah, I just want to interrupt you for a moment to, to say we're we're moving on to that agenda item oh. next. This is the okay. opportunity All for right. folks to speak on anything else, not that item. Oh, okay, we have a couple uh, participants online. Uh, looks like Mr. Vernassa, you're up. Yes, Ben Vernazza here from Aptos. I'm sorry that I had a medical procedure at the last meeting that I had to go to and I missed the part about the policy uh, committee and what they came up with. And that's what I want to talk about briefly. Uh, first of all, the ultimate trail as in the final draft and even worse in the future uh, does not satisfy four of the five requirements of the safety goals of the policy statement. First one, is to prioritize funding for programs that reduce fatal or injury collisions. The American and Disability Act comes in with that because the, the, the trail is unsafe. Two, encourage projects to improve safety for young and vulnerable users. Now, Jade Street Park is being developed as a safe playground. They need a safe way to get there and okay. get Okay, we're not as timeless though. I'm sorry, I'm talking about policy. How do we do that? Mr. Vernazza? What? Mr. Vernazza, I just wanted to clarify, we are still on oral communications. Yes, so, I, I, and, I know I am. I, if this was on the last menu that I had a medical procedure. Raise your hand so they, they know that we're here. Exactly. Can you text, what's your, or I'll text what's your name that I'm here. Felipe, I, we... Yeah, Commissioner like Hernandez, we, we see oh. you here, so we're, we'll go ahead and promote you in just a minute. Okay, Eduardo's here too now. All right. We had technical difficulties, sorry. Okay, the four... Okay, gotcha. Okay, Mr. Veranza, you can go ahead and finish your comment. The, the I'll third, give you another 20 seconds. The third principle was subject project designed to reduce serious injury or death by facilitating safe for safe travel for most vulnerable users. And the last one, support benefits a timely access emergency series. The fire department says it'll take them more time on foot to go through these tunnels that's created by the fences on the, on the ultimate trail. Thank you very much, bye-bye. Thank you. All right, uh, Lowell first, you're up next. Lowell, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, hello there, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, good morning. Good morning, commissioners. I just wanna say thank you very much for all the work that's uh, being uh, done and uh, certainly needs to be done. I too had some medical procedures uh, recently and had to go to San Jose today. And guess what? Caught in the traffic jam, pretty thick, pretty thick several days of the week. So I want to say thank you though for the improvements that have uh, been made, the merge lanes coming along 
the safety improvements, certainly the pedestrian crossing will be a, a valuable a valuable piece of uh, transportation. And but there's much more to do. The congestion is not uh, relieved yet, and um, hopefully there is better plan for the future. So I want to encourage staff to keep working hard. Their work is very important, and uh, and I'm hopeful the commissioners will continue to focus on getting Santa Cruz County moving. I want to echo Mayor Gonzalez's comments uh, that sometimes in South County we feel like we're the last on the line. So, thank you very much. I won't uh, I'll yield the rest of my time and uh, know of my appreciation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurst, Mayor Hurst. Uh, uh, we have uh, one more speaker on the line for oral communications. Sean, you are up. The link for today's meeting isn't where they can usually be found. And this uh, this meeting's happening far from uh, far from the source of resistance. How much harder are you all going to try to um, put uh, um, uh, you know hide this effort from uh, from the Greenway executive director? On your on the uh, on the commission, you know if you go if you go right now, you'll see that it's a revised agenda where one can usually click on the agenda and get the uh, uh, get the get the link. How to get this from uh, somebody else? This commission is far from transparent, and I really appreciate the people who uh, the people on this commission. Who are uh, doing as the voters have uh, have showed them time and time again, uh, where their heart is, and uh, where their needs are, and that they're, they're not going to continue to wait for the progress that's been presented by the RTC. This is an RTC. The rail and trail is an RTC idea. It's your own project. The only way it can fail is if somebody from Greenway gets on the commission and tries to scuttle the whole damn thing. So um, keep fighting for the needs of students and the needs of people with disabilities to travel through the county, to attend school, to apply for internships, to have relationships, to go to church and temple independently thank you thank you see we have uh one more caller on the line jared boggs you're up oh hi thank you very much yeah just to reiterate the wrong link was published but who knows maybe it's a clerical error but i'm really grateful to have this opportunity i wanted to voice my support for um the continued construction of the trail uh enthusiastically i Every everyone that I've encountered, I mean, and it's it's in I think a diverse group, loves just absolutely loves the trail, wants a trail very badly, which of course is consistent with the vote in 2022, where 73% roughly uh, percent of people voted down Measure D, um, which you know has to be taken as, as support for construction of this trail. Um, of course, there's some room for debate about whether we'll have a, a train system or not, and, it, and it's a very comp complex issue, but um, <laughs> over the many, many years, it's been decades of debate and analysis and consideration of all the different factors, and it is very complex. It's, it's clear that the consensus, an overwhelming consensus, uh, is in favor of the current plan. This is this is not debatable, but it seems, and it's it's also it seems fairly clear that there is still some, uh, a small group, a minority, uh, some of a couple of whom or a few, a small group of whom sit on your council, uh, disagree with the seventy three percent, and it it really appears like obstruction, obstructionism. That's what this looks like when I when I read in the papers about objections to concern about cutting of trees and so forth. Now. 
and this information has been available for a long time. So steps like that, actions like that, they, they seem transparent. They seem disingenuous. And that's very disappointing. I think it'd be difficult to get 73% of people to agree that the sun rises in the east, I think. 73%. Thanks for all your work. I really appreciate your efforts. Thank you, Mr. Boggs. I'm going to just make one more comment here. Um, it, it looks like we do have another speaker with their hand up. But we are moving, the, the interest in moving into the discussion about the staff report on the coastal rail trail segments 10 and 11 is clear. We, we need to get through oral communications to, uh, to do that. So Mr. Boggs, you were really speaking to that item. So I'll take that as your public comment for item five on our agenda and ask if anybody here, <clears throat> excuse me, has uh, comments on something that is not related to the rail trail Segments 10 and 11. Okay, I see there's one hand up. Ms. Orbach, are you here to speak to the segments 10 and 11 or something else? <clears throat> okay, hearing, okay, gotcha. That, I think that was a vote with your hand. So uh, we will uh, go ahead and move on to our uh, regular agenda item. I do wanna ask, are there any additions or deletions for Ms. Blakesley presents? Commissioner uh, Brown, we had a revised agenda. The revised agenda does indicate the remote location for commissioners Felipe Hernandez and Eduardo Montesino at the Sheridan Grand in Sacramento. And we also have a hand, an additional handout for item five. Thank you. All right, we will move on to item five. Uh, this is the Coastal Rail Trail segments 10 and 11 project. Ms. Blakesley is here to present. Thank you. Great. <clears throat> Good morning, commissioners. Um, thank you for hearing this item. Um, Grace Blakesley, transportation planner with the Regional Transportation Commission. And as you've already mentioned, I'm here to talk to you about segments 10 and 11 specifically this morning. Before I get going, I wanted to acknowledge the work of Tracy New, our finance director at RTC, in helping me to develop this report and the cash flow model, as well as the work of the county staff, Rod Tidmore, who's leading the um, effort on behalf of the county of Santa Cruz. So next slide, please. So how I'm gonna walk through this is I'm gonna provide a very brief project overview. You have um, heard about this item on several occasions, but of course ask questions if more detail about the design or project is desired. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the project schedule, and then I'm gonna talk about the next steps, um, including cost estimates and funding and project delivery risks. And then I'll lead into a conversation about Measure D active transportation um, capacity and the environment Environmental review and RTC's role as a responsible agency, and then end with a brief next steps. Next slide, please. So the RTC owns the Santa Cruz branch rail line from Pajaro to Davenport. It's a 32 mile branch rail line. And as many folks are aware, we are developing the coastal rail trail along that corridor. Um, the sorry, the segment and 10 project extends from 17th Avenue um, all the way out to State Park. What's on the street screen right now is the portion of segment 10, which extends from 17th Avenue to 47th Avenue. Next slide, please. And here is a, an image showing the section of segment 11, which extends from 47th to State Park. The portion that travels near Capitola Village um, directs the trail users through Capitola Village um, and does not utilize the Capitola, uh, does not cross over Soquel Creek as part of the proposed project. Um, the pedestrian and bicycle crossing uh, that could be included as part of the coastal rail trail is included in the zero emission, is being evaluated as part of the zero emission passenger rail and trail project and is referred to as segment 11B. Next slide, please. So I wanted just to talk a little bit about the project schedule. 
Um, the project um, schematic trail plans were developed in, I should say, 2022, this is 2023, and they identified potential of uh, alignments and project footprints for the purpose of obtaining public input on the trail alignment, as well as undertaking, uh, uh, evaluating the potential environmental impacts. Then the project initiated environmental review, the draft environmental impact report was released in October, 2023 and was completed in um, late March and presented to the County Board of Supervisors and was accepted. The final environmental impact report and the findings were accepted by the County Board of Supervisors on March 26th. Once projects are environmentally cleared, they can move forward into final design, permitting, and right of, right of way. That's the third phase that's shown on this slide. And once the final designs, design plans are completed, then the project can be advertised for construction. So you'll hear me refer to pre-construction activities throughout my presentation, and that's going to include the first three phases that you see um, on this slide. Once the projects have completed the pre-construction activities, they can compete better for state and federal funds because they're considered shovel ready or score higher under the category of project readiness. So you've probably observed that RTC staff in coordination with our local partners have been using some of our local funds to bring those projects through pre-construction activities to compete well for state and federal funds. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So prior RTC actions have adopted a preferred scenario for transportation uses of the Santa Cruz branch rail line under which the continuous transportation corridor is utilized for both public transportation option and a bicycle and pedestrian corridor with public transit preferred option being passenger rail service. With this in mind, the County of Santa Cruz developed schematic plans for a trail option that would be located within the rail line right of way next to the railroad tracks. In addition to the trail alignment next to the railroad tracks, the County of Santa Cruz also evaluated another trail alignment where the trail location is located in place of the existing tracks. This alternative version, referred to as the optional first phase interim trail, preserves the Santa Cruz branch rail line for future freight service by way of rail banking and removes the tracks and places the trail on the rail line until a time when freight is reactivated. Now the project is moving forward into final design. And at this stage into the project development, it's prudent to move forward with one preferred design option. Um, this is important because we are able to focus future financial resources on one project definition and design rather than choosing two alignments. Also choosing one alignment demonstrates to state and federal grant programs that there's local support for a specific project. However, the RTC could consider an option to request that both alignments advance into final design to keep future design options open. RTC is not, staff has not requested a cost estimate for this additional design work, but expects that it would be around $2 million to advance the, both the ultimate trail configuration and the interim trail configuration um, through final design. It's unknown at this time if the state grant funding award to the County of Santa Cruz could be applied to the interim trail configuration. The County of Santa Cruz could request a scope change to the California Transportation Commission to consider this request. RTC staff would not advise the County of Santa Cruz to request this scope change unless the RTC directed staff to pursue rail banking on the Santa Cruz branch rail line. And there was some certainty that rail banking could be completed by late 2025 or early 2026. At this time, RTC staff is recommending that the RTC affirm its support for the coastal rail trail segments 10 and 11 project and the ultimate trail configuration. This is consistent with the design and constructions of segment 5, 7, 8, 9, and 18. It's also the project that is currently defined in the State Active Transportation Program Grant Award. 
and the ultimate trail configuration aims to maximize the Santa Cruz branch rail line right of way for future high capacity public transit, which is consistent with the unified corridor study and rail service should RTC implement rail as envisioned in the trans transit alternative corridors analysis. Next slide, please. Infrastructure projects are very complex, and with every project, there are project delivery risks. Specifically, regional transportation projects like the coastal rail tra trail segments 10 and 11 can be extremely complex in part because of their linear nature. This includes crossing multiple local jurisdictions involving dozens of agency reviews and approval, and traversing multiple biological resources and riparian areas, which trigger the need for resource agency permits. Additional challenges when delivering types of, these types of projects are developing pro project cost estimates. We develop project cost estimates at different stages of project development in order to create funding plans for projects that can develop over a period of five or 10 years and may be subject to unknown economic conditions. Another key component associated with project delivery that is challenging, of course, is obtaining the necessary funding agreements to deliver projects. Agencies like RTC and County of Santa Cruz typically see funding packages for projects developed over time and can involve, involve multiple funding sources. As you are aware, the Commission programmed 17 million to segments 10 and 11 in May 2022, and this County of Sex Santa Cruz was successful in using these funds to leverage over 67 million from the State Active Transportation Program in December 2022. I'll talk a little bit more about funding sources um, in a subsequent slide. So furthermore, once funding is received, there are numerous requirements associated with receiving the funding, including entering into the funding agreements. So for RTC Measure D funding, if the funding agreement is in the form of a cooperative agreement between RTC and project sponsors, and this defines roles and responsibilities for project delivery. For the state transportation funds received by the county, the funding agreement is in the form of a Caltrans base baseline agreement, which the County of Santa Cruz staff brought to the County of Santa Cruz Board of Supervisors in March for their consideration, but was not approved by the County Board of Supervisors. Funding agreements require project sponsors to meet funding deadlines, and in the case of state transportation funds, to submit allocation requests by certain dates. The upcoming deadline for the final design allocation received from the State Active Transportation Program for Segment 10 and 11 is June 2024. As a result of the County of Santa Cruz action on March 26, the County of Santa Cruz will not make this deadline and instead will request a funding extension. The State Active Transportation Program allows for extensions of up to 12 to 20 months depending on the project phase. It's RTC's understanding the County of Santa Cruz uh, will seek a maximum request since only one extension is allowable. However, one extension for this phase of the project could lead to future funding extensions and um, the potential to miss funding deadlines. Extension requests are discretionary and not guaranteed and, and will be determined by the California Transportation Commission at their June meeting. Next slide, please. So the segment 10 and 11 project has secured um, just around 84 million in funding for pre-construction and construction activities. And as reported at the County Board of Supervisors meeting in March, recent cost estimates show an increase in the cost of right-of-way and construction, which increases the total project cost to around 112 million. The construction cost increase are a combination of industry-wide escalation using number from recent Highway 1 project bids, as well as the addition of a viaduct in New Brighton State Park. Based on recent bids received for the Coastal Rail Trail Segment 5 project, this bidding environment may be changing, but the County of Santa Cruz continues to assume a 5% escalation rate to the mid-year of construction. The increase in cost of right-of-way is associated with having more information about the, the potential mitigation, mitigation costs, which are paid for out of the right-of-way budget line item. 
based on these costs at approximately 30% design, that's where the project uh, design is now, there's a funding gap of 27 to $28 million. Cost estimates will be updated again at 65% design in late 2025 or early 2026, depending when the county enters into a Caltrans baseline agreement and requests an allocation for final design. In the meantime, County of Santa Cruz, in coordination with project partners, will seek opportunities to reduce these project costs and to increase project funding. Next slide, please. A little bit about some cost reduction strategies. So one cost reduction strategy that's being applied to all of the trail segments under development involves value engineering which is a review of key design challenges and potential modifications to design or materials. This pro the value engineering um, assessment is already getting underway and is being led by the Regional Transportation Commission. We expect to have a meeting in early May so that we can help to identify some of these cost reduction strategies sooner than later and inform uh, the coastal trip, the segments eight through 11 project, actually X through 12 project design. Other cost reduction strategies include minimizing railroad track relocation costs, which are estimated at about eight or nine million of the project costs for segments 10 and 11. <clears throat> the project could minimize the cost of railroad track relocation by working with a railroad operator to transfer the railroad track relocation to them or through rail banking, which would allow the railroad tracks not to be reconstructed or constructed as part of a future project. Another cost reduction strategy would be to consider a project scope change that could include, but not limited to, reducing the number of trail miles constructed as part of the project. RTC staff does not recommend this approach because the full project benefits of constructing the continuous bicycle and pedestrian corridor wouldn't be realized. Another cost reducing strategy could be to pursue the different trail alignment. And like, as mentioned earlier, this can include pursuing the optional first phase um, that could be constructed with currently programmed funds um, that would be subject to approval of the California Transportation Commission and would only be feasible should the RTC uh, um, complete the rail banking process. Another option to pursue a trail alignment could be to look for alignments that routes portions of the trail on existing roadways, but note this is not consistent with the vision of the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail Master Plan. As mentioned before, any scope change would require approval from the California Transportation Commission. I'm sorry, yes, the California Transportation Commission. Staff at RTC is recommending that um, the RTC direct staff to work with the County of Santa Cruz on the value, um, the engineering analysis to reduce those costs for segment 10 and 11, as well as to direct staff to negotiate necessary agreements with the railroad operator for relocation of the track to accommodate the ultimate trail configuration at their cost to the extent feasible. Next slide, please. So RTC staff in coordination with the County of Santa Cruz is already seeking additional funds for the coastal rail pro trail projects, including segments 10 and 11. Um, to fill the funding gap for construction and mitigation, additional funds would be need to be secured by late 2026 or early 2027 to ensure sufficient funding is available to bid the project for construction. So this gives us about two years uh, to secure additional funding. It's also important to note that cost estimates will be updated between now and then as the project becomes more refined and there is more certainty about the economic environment in which the project will be bid. Some of the funding opportunities that RTC is current pursuing are listed on this slide. Um, RTC staff submitted a federal raise grant application. The total submitted was $19.5 million for coastal rail trail segments eight through 12 with 8.5 million identified for segments 10 and 11. RTC is also considering submitting an application to a new federal active transportation improvement program, which applications are due in June 2024. And we've also submitted a earmark request for fiscal year 24-25 for coastal rail trail projects. 
and we will continue to investigate other funding opportunities. While some grant programs do contribute to cost increases, uh, the state active transportation program does not. Other local funding sources that um, the commission could consider utilizing to fill the funding gap include the Measure D active transportation category, which I'll discuss more later in this presentation. Um, state transportation improvement funds are allocated to the RTC. The last round RTC received about 8.6 million to cover a two year period. Uh, regional surface transportation funds, which RTC is in the amount of about 3 million per year. These state and federal funds are often distributed to local jurisdictions, but RTC could elect to program these funds to project with regional benefits, such as coastal rail trail segments 10 and 11. Another item I think is important to note is the importance of meeting project delivery and funding commitments after, view or after being awarded state and federal funds. Having a good track record for project delivery is very important um, when you return to a funding source and ask for a new project. They will look at your past history and ability to deliver projects on time. <clears throat> So RTC staff recommends that the um, RTC direct staff to continue to pursue additional funding sources for coastal rail trail segments 10 and 11, and to commit to fully funding the project with a combination of state and federal and local funding sources. Next slide, please. So with project funding, uh, delivery risks, cost reduction and funding strategies in mind, uh, the County of Santa Cruz could reconsider approval of the ultimate trail configuration and authorize their staff to enter into a Caltrans-based like agreement, baseline, excuse me, agreement. RTC understands that the County of Santa Cruz may discuss this item later this month with the County Board of Supervisors. RTC could also consider the option of requesting that the California Transportation Commission transfer state active transportation funds from the County of Santa Cruz to the RTC. This would provide the RTC with administration of the grant funds and project approvals. Should RTC pursue this option, there could be such cost to RTC and RTC would need to work with the County of Santa Cruz as well as the California Transportation Commission to assign the grant funds awarded to the RTC. Or the RTC consider, could consider a future action item to program Measure D active transportation funds to the segment 10 and 11 pro project if needed when project cost estimates are updated at a future phase. So now I'm going to move into a discussion of the capacity of the Measure D active transportation uh, category funds for the RTC's consideration of funding future trail segments. Okay, next slide. Before I get into the details, I just wanna note that without voter approved measure D, most of the 18 miles of trail segments that are currently in pre-construction or construction phase would not be moving forward. And the additional, the additional 12 miles of coastal rail trail that are now being um, entering the pre-construction phase as part of the zero emission rail and trail project wouldn't be advancing without the voter approved um, measure D funds, which provides us a mechanism to leverage those state and federal funds. RTC and its partner agencies are now able to deliver many more projects of this major, this magnitude with Measure D because it serves as this important match and that can't be underestimated. It also can provide a tool for filling the funding gaps um, to deliver these desirable projects. So this table, I'm gonna walk you through it. Um, it's also in the staff report. If folks are having trouble seeing it, um, they can look online. It provides information about different scenarios for programming Measure D active transportation category funds. So this considers all of the eligible expenses um, that could uh, be the Measure D active transportation category funds could be used for. So the column on the far left starts with those um, active transportation program category revenues, that first row. These revenue estimates are updated at a minimum annually. 
Recent projects adopted, I'm sorry, the, the, and the recent estimates were adopted by the RTC at its April 2024 meeting. It assumed 170.3 million in revenues over the life of the Measure D active transportation category, plus 3 million in revenues for a total of 174 million, which you see in the first row of this table. RTC does have the authority to bond against Measure D revenues. So you will see bonding listed as an eligible expense and bond proceeds as the second row. Bonding is a way to advance the Measure D funds if projects um, are ready to be delivered prior to um, funds being received by the RTC. And RTC is fortunate to be in a position that it has projects that are ready to be earlier, I mean, to be delivered earlier in the 30 year Measure D um, sales tax measure rather than later on so that the community can experience those benefits sooner. Also listed on the next row are the previously programmed active transportation funds through fiscal year 27-28, which includes funds programmed in the current five-year plan. And this amounts to 63 million. It also includes the next row, the estimated cost increases for segments eight through 11. I've already mentioned the 27 to 28 million that are estimated in a funding gap, funding gap that is currently estimated for segments 10 and 11. We've also been made aware by the city of Santa Cruz, there's a funding gap for their project in approximately 16 million. So that 43 million assumes the funding gap for both of those projects based on cost estimates. I do want to know that note that segment eight and nine is approaching 65% design and that they will have updated cost estimates at around the July timeframe. And we can return to the commission with that information when it's available. The next row addresses trail maintenance as an eligible measure D transportation, a measure D um, active transportation expenditure. RTC has already programmed trail maintenance funds to segment five, the North Coast Rail Trail, also known as the North Coast Rail Trail, and some funds to segment seven in the city of Santa Cruz and to segment 18 in the city of Santa Cruz. And all of those are included in the five-year plan. In addition to those trail maintenance fund, RTC could consider programming additional funds to future trail segments. This was discussed in detail at the RTC September 2023 meeting, which was actually also held here in the city of Watsonville. Um, should RTC assume the cost of trail maintenance for future segments, um, staff, that would reduce the available Measure D active revenues uh, active transportation revenues available for capital projects by about $30 million. A rail corridor maintenance is also an eligible expense under the Measure D active transportation corridor category. It's averaged about 1.2 million per year. And the estimates here assume that it continues over the life of Measure D with about a three and a half percent escalation. These costs could be reduced as RTC seek state and federal funds to construct passenger rail and streamline repair and environmental permitting that the, um, is assumed here um, in the absence of that information. <clears throat> so the remaining measure D capacity for each scenario that I'll talk you through is provided in this last row here for your informational purposes. Staff is not recommending programming any Measure D active transportation funds today, but we prepared this information for your discussion. So now that I've reviewed the eligible expenses that I'm gonna be noting in each of these scenarios, I'll talk through each of the scenarios briefly. Scenario one shows the current projective. So we're looking at that column that says approved funding, the um, second column from the right. Um, that, that shows you the current projected revenues, um, what we assumed as the bond proceeds prior to the updated cost estimates for segments eight through 11, as well as the previously programmed uh, funds and the debt service on the bond revenues that we previously assumed. And it shows you a balance in that scenario of 97 million in Measure D active transportation category funds. Scenario two describes um, it adds to that the scenario one, the cost of fully funding segments eight through 11 funding gap with Measure D active transportation resources. 
Like as mentioned before, staff expects that cost reduction strategies in future grant awards will fill some of the funding gap, but may not fill all of it. So for informational purpose, we went ahead and produced a scenario under which um, you could see if RTC was to fully fund the funding gap uh, with Measure D revenues. And you can see that reduces the available, available Measure D active transportation category funds to 15 million. Scenario three provides information um, if you add in the uh, future corridor maintenance and all of those future corridor maintenance costs are realized. So there's an additional 36 million that would be needed from Measure D, active transportation category, should the commission um, choose to fund rail maintenance with that uh, Measure D active transportation resources, revenues, excuse me. And then finally, scenario four um, gives you an idea of what the uh, what would happen to the available uh, capacity if you then added in trail maintenance for all of the um, segments going forward with an addition of uh, expenditure of 30 million. And it, it shows you that the um, RTC, Measure D8 active transportation capacity, capacity is insufficient. So the actual request and programming of Measure D funds to meet all of these needs will likely be somewhere in the middle of these requests. So these are just for information purposes, and it doesn't consider um, any other cost increases on projects for which the project sponsors will um, request Measure D active transportation funding. I do want to um, just take the opportunity right now to let folks know something about segment five because it was reported in the director's report uh, last month, no, sorry, April 4th, um, that there had been identified a funding gap for the mitigation portion of uh, measure segment five. Um, although the engineer's estimates for construction came in um, below, I'm sorry, the bids came in below the engineer's estimates. Um, RTC has been working with the segment five a team at Federal Highways. Uh, we think the mitigation costs uh, will come down significantly upon more review of the cost estimates. And um, Federal Highways is going to head to going to go ahead and award the construction contract next week based on RTC's existing funding agreement with them, uh, which would require RTC to cover just around 24% of any cost increases on the project. Uh, we do have some contingency already built into Measure D, but I mention this because as RTC has funding agreements with local jurisdictions for projects and they experience cost increases, that will also need to be considered moving forward. Okay, um, next slide, please. So before closing my presentation, I know I've provided a lot of information here. I do want to briefly walk through the environmental review for segments 10 and 11 and RTC's role as the responsible agency in this project. Um, let's see, I want to also remind people what the purpose of CEQA is. I think it's important uh, for people to remember that it's a really important process for evaluating, disclosing the potential environmental impacts of the project. It's used to inform decision makers and the public about potential significant environmental impacts. Um, it identifies ways that um, environmental damage can be avoided or reduced and explains to the public the reasons why decisions are made, even if significant impacts occur. Um, the environmental review and uh, certification and acceptance of the EIR is not an approval of the project. And we saw that uh, last month at the County Board of Supervisors where they did certify the final EIR, but they did not approve a specific project. Next slide, please. So any of RTC's action today would be um, on the help to move to complete the project environment, sorry, the project approval and environmental um, phase of the segment 10 and 11 project. And RTC is a responsible agency under CEQA and, oh, that's a city, oh, dang should say the County of Santa Cruz um, is the lead agency. Um, and these, uh, I'm sorry, this slide wasn't, the updated slide didn't make it in there. The dates down here aren't correct. So let me just date the correct dates. So this was the lead agency for segment 10 and 11 is the County of Santa Cruz and the public review period was October 15th through December 
of 16th, 2023. And the certified EIR, as I mentioned, was considered by the um, County of Santa Cruz on March 26. As the responsible agency, RTC has discretionary approval of the proposed project and considers the adequacy of this certified document, but does not certify the document itself, but the RTC will make necessary findings and the statements of overriding considerations. And I'll talk a little bit about that next. Next slide, please. Okay, so as part of the environmental process, three significant and unavoidable impacts were identified um, of, 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 to result from the segment 10 and 11 uh, project. These are related to the aesthetics, the biological resources, and the greenhouse gas emissions. Um, these are all related to the tree removal that's associated uh, with the project um, and result in these significant and unavoidable impacts. Next slide, please. So when a lead agency or a responsible agency accepts an EIR, it must consider the findings uh, regarding the impacts that are significant. So those, it can be the significant and unavoidable impacts that I just mentioned, as well as the significant impacts that can be reduced to less than significant with mitigation. These findings are important because they explain why the impacts are found to be significant and found to be re reduced to less than significant or unavoidable. So it discloses that information to the public and decision makers. And these are described and included in your packet as exhibit A to attachment three. Also the statement of overriding considerations are important for you to be familiar with. They explain why beneficial aspects of the proposed project outweigh the unavoidable adverse environmental impacts and why the agency is willing to accept these adverse impacts. This involves RTC making a judgment that the project and its benefits outweigh those unavoidable significant impacts. So today staff recommends that RTC accept the coastal rail trail segments 10 and 11 final impact report as adequate for decision making and adopt findings, overriding considerations and the mitigation monitoring and reporting program for coastal rail trail segments 10 and 11, ultimate trail configuration as well as the optional first phase and to file a notice of determination for the project in its entirety. entirety. Next slide. So really the next steps to continue to move this for project forward is for the County of Santa Cruz or should it be desirable the RTC to enter a baseline agreement with Caltrans so they can seek funding allocation for final design from the California Transportation Commission as well for RTC staff and the County of Santa Cruz to move forward to fill that funding gap and to reduce um, costs, project costs. And that concludes my report. I think the next slide does list the staff recommendations uh, for your reference. Thank you, Ms. Blakesley. Great overview. Uh, so I will, I, I wanna now uh, ask commissioners if you have questions that you'd like to ask. Um, and just, just a reminder, we've got a lot of people who wanna speak uh, and we, um, we, we, we often have, comments kind of bleed into this question section. So if you could try to make comment, uh, comments at the end and ask the questions now so we can get to the public. Thanks. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is actually for our executive director. Um, you know, we're hearing a lot about future funding, insufficient funding for the project. And this goes to the heart of, uh, you know, what future funding sources and how they would actually deliver. Um, we, in California, of course, there's a um, $68 billion deficit. Uh, we have a, the state has about a, a $24 billion uh, rainy day fund that's going to drop that. You've been around the block a little bit with it as far as the state is concerned. Um, and I haven't even mentioned the federal ballooning deficit of uh, about a trillion dollars every four or five months that it keeps going up and up and up. So. When we talk about grants and funding and um, what is the likelihood of, you know, the state actually being able to provide um, funding for the gaps that have been mentioned so eloquently by our speaker? Uh, so the, the primary source of state funding on this project is active transportation 
program funds. As Grace mentioned, uh, that program does not fund cost increases. Say again. Um, does not fund cost increases. So that uh, that's the the state's active transportation uh, program. Um, in other years, there have been uh, some earmarks at the state level. As you mentioned, we have a significant state deficit, so there are unlikely to be earmarks this year. Um, our the state has had significant swings in budget deficit deficits and significant surpluses. So. A deficit this year and projecting next year does not actually mean that that there won't be a surplus available in the time that we would need need it, but it would have to be a, an earmark at the at the federal level or at the state level. At the federal level, we're, we've applied for uh, a number of programs. Um, the federal funding is, is not contingent upon uh, there not being a deficit because the fed, the federal budget doesn't require a balanced budget. Um, so uh, we have been successful in the past in getting federal grants. We just need we just need to keep applying and try to fill the gap. But there's no way of us to be, guarantee that we can. We can only say we've been successful in the past. Thank you. Uh, I said, uh, Com Commissioner Rotkins here, and then uh, Commissioner Montesino. I've got you next. This is a, this is a quick question, actually. Um, Presentation on the Measure D available funds demonstrates there's not enough money in Measure D to cover the total costs here, and also deal with you know future maintenance costs and costs of preparing the reconstruction work for other segments to the south of segments ten and eleven. Um, but it it shows that there's some capacity there that conceivably could be uh, contributing to this project. Am I correct in understanding that that, that that how much of that Measure D funding is held in reserve for these other projects versus how much you put into trying to close this gap, the discretionary choice of this commission? That's correct, and you'd be talking about scenario two. And is it fair to say that the staff's recommendation is that it not be all of it because you wouldn't bother making that presentation if that were the case? That's correct. Thank you. Commissioner Montesino. Yeah, um, I'd like to ask a question of how, you know, how much um, money have we spent in South County from sex, uh, segments 13 to 20? So for the active transportation program from 13 uh, through 20, we have about 350,000 or maybe 375 programmed in the active transportation category as to advance the zero emission passenger rail and trail project. And then we have a just over 2 million uh, that we've programmed through uh, segment 18, phase two and three. And I'd need to get back to you about how much we programmed for segment 18, phase one. I don't have that on the top of my head. So would that be in the um, sort of chopping block of paying um, best, you know, basically what I see, all the money in these segments, eight, eight through 11? Sorry, I had a hard time hearing the question. Could you repeat it? There's a little echo. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so we're from segment eight through 11. So if we invest almost a 97. Do you hear me? It sounded like you had stopped mid sentence. So we're okay. So, so if we invest the, uh, almost a 97 million, would that jeopardize uh, the investments in South County? Talking too low, brother. Um, depending on how much the RTC did program at a future action to segments 10 and 11, it does reduce the available reserves. I think in a, an important piece of the um, to consider is as RTC and the County of Santa Cruz and other project partners show that they can deliver these projects. Um, it does create a good track record and makes us more competitive for attaining awards for future segments, including segments 13 through 20, which you referenced. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jenny Johnson. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> so I have a few questions of staff. 
Um, you've told us that the county board, county staff have told us our board that the schedule and the CTC grant says that we have to do a preferred project option now rather than moving forward with designing both options. That actually is the first time today that I ever heard that that was even a possibility. So thanks for that information. And that we have to go to the June CTC meeting with a signed baseline agreement. And it's our understanding that the baseline agreement tells the CTC that the county commits to, to future funding for the ultimate trail. And even if we, if we're segments 10 and 11. Um, so if we sign that agreement and we aren't able to do the additional fundraising, what is the county's obligation under that baseline agreement that we signed? Um, first, I wanted just to add one um, additional piece of information to what you said about moving forward with a preferred project. It is my understanding that to enter the Caltrans baseline agreement, you do need to identify a preferred, preferred project. And what I mentioned is that if the Regional Transportation Commission would like to use its own funding to advance a interim trail final design in parallel so and then later request the california transportation commission to uh, have a scope change for the construction funding that could be something the commission could offer i mean consider sorry not offer um and then in terms of the baseline agreement it's my understanding that the uh, there is a termination clause and that the county of santa cruz could exit that baseline agreement but they would be forfeiting the funding okay that's good to know um is there grant money available for maintenance for the trail and the quarter? Trail maintenance maintenance funding is very difficult, and we do not have identified an alternative source of funding except for to work with our local partners and utilize the funding that they have for their other maintenance programs. But we do we we do rec um, recognize that trail maintenance funding is a real challenge, and we'd like to see our local jurisdictions um, consider future funding options. RTC and local jurisdictions can consider future funding options that are dedicated specifically to trail maintenance and to increase revenues. That would make sense. And you spoke earlier about um, being competitive in the grant uh, arena, and we all hope for that. That's very, very important. And um, what would you consider, I've asked this uh, question before to Mr. Weiss, and I know the answer that he gave me, but I'd like to just hear, have for the minute of the public, what would you consider a minimum um, grant, a local match for a grant of, on the federal level? Um, ten, like minimum 10% up to 20%, what would you consider the range as a match? I would, we aim for a minimum of 20%. Um, Hopefully that's what our director also said. I'm looking at him right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I probably said that in a lot of words. Yeah, well, that's good to know because if we're going to be um, fiscally prudent we and we want to make sure that segments 13 through 20 uh, eventually qualify for federal funds, we're not going to hold out for state potentially because of their um, budget woes. We want to make sure that we have some money set aside um, for South County segments to be improved. So that's, that's a good number. I, I want to know if the existing rails, historic rails can be used for future commuter rail service. Um, it'll depend on the type of vehicle um, and the speeds that we're talking about. And that's something that the zero emission passenger rail project right now is looking at different types of vehicles. And then that will drive the type of infrastructure that's needed. Um, the existing rails that we have now would not support the speeds that we've talked about in the um, transit alternatives um, corridor analysis. So um, we'd look at, have to look at what type of infrastructure is needed. And just to speak to um, Eduardo's previous question, and since you're mentioning South County, um, Tracy just provided me with the information that we've programmed 3.1 million uh, to segments 13 through 20 so far. Segments five, seven, eight, nine, and 18 that are under development now, of those segments, which ones had to have the historic rails moved and at what cost? So none of the prior projects that you mentioned, we have had to relocate uh, the rails in order to accommodate the trail. So that applies to 10 and 11 at this point. I'm so, oh, sorry, 10 and 11, it is proposed for rail relocation. I'm okay, sorry. So, so far in the city of Santa Cruz and city of Watsonville, we haven't had to relocate the historic rails. Correct. Okay, well, that's, that's good to know. And then um, I, I wanna know what projects have been funded 
with the state uh, improvement funds of the past two years. You mentioned 8.6 million and the RSTIP fund for the last two years, you mentioned 3 million a year, so that's 6 million. So that's about 14, 15 million dollars of discretionary local funding. Could you just get, I know you don't have a complete list, but just for the last few years, what have we funded with those funds in terms of projects? And um, we've answered many of, most of those funds to local projects, but I'm going to defer to Luis Mendez or if Rachel's online to answer that question. I've... Thank you. Yeah, the RTC funds a variety of projects with the uh, funding sources. Like uh, Grace mentioned, there are a variety of local projects, and some of them are for road rehabilitation, some of them high school and pedestrian improvements at different uh, local jurisdictions. The RTC is also. I'm having a hard time hearing you, Luis. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So it is a variety of uh, projects that are funded with um, those funds. So some have been for road rehabilitation projects, some uh, also for bicycle and pedestrian uh, improvements. Um, transit projects are also elig eligible uh, for those funding sources and also regional projects. So the RTC has also used those regional projects uh, uh, that the RTC does, does put forward. Have we used any of those funds in the last six to 10 years on the rail corridor or the trail? I don't remember that we have in the last uh, six to 10 years. From so it's been to other projects. Okay. And then you mentioned scope changes as one of the possibilities for Submix 10 and 11, um, maybe reducing the number of trail miles. How does that affect, I'm gonna ask this to Mr. Weiss, how does that affect the state's grant score on the active transportation aspect of the project? I would think that would probably have a significant impact. Uh, so, would you unpack that for us a little bit, please? Um, so, the active transportation program is, it looks at, at the benefits the project is providing. And so, to the, the, the California Transportation Commission awarded the funding to this project on certain assumed benefits. If we were to, you know, cut the cut the length of the trail in half, it would obviously have much less, much fewer benefits. And my personal opinion, I think, I think would be unlikely that, that we would get that approved by the California Transportation Commission. Okay, that's good to know too. And then, um, and I just have a, two more questions. I'm sorry, Chair, but you've been very patient. Thank you. Um, you mentioned something, Grace, about um, the county seeking an extension on our CTC contract. That direction has not been given to the staff by the board. The board, um, approved the EIR on uh, Supervisor McPherson's motion and um, had questions, physical questions, about the rest of the staff recommendations. So would you please tell me where you got that information that the county intends to do an extension? Thank you for that question. And it is my understanding that the, there's uh, the Caltrans, the county will not be able to enter into the Caltrans baseline agreement in time to meet the June 26 deadline, which is why the county had asked for that um, approval by the County Board of Supervisors in March. So um, I didn't mean to speak on behalf of the county, but I think it's very unlikely that the county would be able to execute that Caltrans baseline agreement in the time frame. Um, the county does have the choice to submit two requests uh, to the California Transportation Commission. They could submit an allocation request at the same time as an extension request in the event that the Caltrans baseline agreement was completed in time and then remove their extension request. So the intent is to try to make that deadline, but it seems extremely unlikely um, given that the board didn't approve the baseline agreement in March. <clears throat> so um, I have great deal of respect for for you, Grace, and the RTC staff in general, that's just simply incorrect. Um, it's my understanding that we have this back before our board on April 30th, and it's the full intent of, um, of to have that discussion in terms of the baseline agreement. So, and 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 my also is my understanding that there's two placeholders in the June agenda of the CTC agenda, and one says asking for an extension, and the other says baseline agreement has been signed. So, and we'll probably pull one of those agenda items before that time, because we know there's a lead up time to their June meeting. So I just wanna make it clear to members of the public uh, and members of this commission that that is simply not the case. The, the county has not, the county staff have not been directed to do an extension. That conversation is gonna happen on April 30th. And so um, uh, thanks for that. And then um, you did, did mention there was $2 million more possible discretionary RTC money that we could say 
if we're not sure that we can backfill um, the ultimate trail design for all the segments under development versus the interim, we just we take two more million dollars to potentially avoid um, uh, cost overruns that we can't backfill. Um, that would be discretionary money. That's what you said. So now I understand that. Thanks for that clarification. So thanks for the questions. I appreciate it, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Schifrin? Yes, <clears throat> thank you. I just wanted to clarify a couple of points because I, I want to appreciate the staff report, but we covered a lot of material. And I think for people who um, haven't read the staff report or on much background, it might be helpful to clarify. The scenario chart that you provided is in a way a worst case scenario because am I correct that it, is, it doesn't assume any additional grant funding? Correct. So it kind of is worst case, it seems to me, given the amount of grant funding the commission has received. That. The other point I want to clarify is kind of the timing point. If the county and or the commission approve the project, I think you clarified that that doesn't make them, either one of them, legally obligated to do the project. What it essentially does is to give the county and or RTC essentially two and a half years before construction happens to try to find that additional money that's needed to build it, whether it goes up or does how much it goes up. Um, is that not correct, that there is this time period where there may not be any more additional money, which may mean that the commission and the prices may go up to it may not be possible to do the project financially. On the other hand, there may be significant grant increases that would make it much less of an impact on the Measure D budget by doing these projects. So my understanding that really there's a, there is this two, two plus year time frame, assuming that the project is approved for now, so that it's possible to move forward and go after those funds. Okay. That's correct. And it's not unusual for projects at this level of design, we're at 30% design and, and finishing the project environmental um, and approval phase that you would continue to actively seek funding for construction up until the construction award. Thank you. Commissioner Rockin. Just real quickly, when, when is it that the staff thinks would be the most appropriate time for this commission to decide what? share of the measure D funds might go to this project? That's a good question. It would be at the time that RTC enters into a construction, I'm sorry, a cooperative agreement with the county for construction. That could be around the 65% design phase or later. It was not, we're not recommending programming those funds. That, that time period would be near the end of 2025. Right. Commissioner Montesino. Early 26. More questions. Uh, Rob uh, Tidmore from the county just corrected me to be around in 2026. I yeah, I just uh, have a question on 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 the action items. Um, affirming support for the coastal rail chart. Why do we need an affirmation? Are you asking for why we have the recommendation for item one? Yeah. yeah. It would be a, a project approval to um, provide information to the county that the RTC is affirming its support for the ultimate trail configuration moving forward into final design. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Quinn. Good morning. Thank you for the extensive information to review. I'm going to turn our attention You're welcome. to page 15. Yeah, page 15, <laughs> I have two specific questions. Under the options of getting through Capitola with the trail, one of the options is routing down through Capitola Village and coming back up. How do we mesh that suggestion with Measure L asked by the Capitola voters? It's a good question. We work closely with the city of Capitola um, to work with Measure L. So Measure L directs the city of Capitola not to spend resources on trail maintenance or um, is one of the aspects. So any improvements, which right now is a signage primarily with a few improvements to um, Cliff Drive would be maintained by the County of Santa Cruz. 
Um, the other piece of measure L is to pursue development of the coastal rail trail um, within the Santa Cruz branch rail line as, um, and that is throughout most of the city of Capitola. And then RTC is continuing to pursue that component of the project that travels over Soquel Creek as part of the zero emission passenger rail and trail project. I thought that measure L explicitly included the idea of the rail going rail going to the village of Capitola. It's not my understanding of the language, but we could bring back the um, Capitola's council analysis, which just describes Measure L at a future meeting, if you'd like. I think it would be useful to have that perfect board. On the same page, the other option, option A, has the trail going over the trestle. Oh. What's the fate of the rails? That require a rail bank? The rails be moved? Yes, option design option A would require rail banking in order to construct the trail on top of the rails on the or in place of the rails on the Capitola trestle. How do we reconcile option A, which would require rail banking as then being put forward with our refusal to explore rail banking as a necessary component of moving? So what you're talking about is option A is part of the proposed project in the environmental documents. So segment 10 and 11 um, environmental document, that's what Commissioner Quinn is referring to. And we included it in there to provide the commission with uh, future flexibility should they pursue rail banking. Um, the project environmental document and the environmental review is a fairly heavy um, and expensive process. And it's a key component to setting the stage for future project approvals. So as to the extent that we could could, um, we in, included options for um, both the um, proposed project ultimate trail configuration as well as the optional interim trail and the um, trail across the Capitola trestle so that the commission had that flexibility should they want to pursue it at a future time. So with the risk of appearing even more dogmatic, I don't want to appear like I'm obstructionist, but I do want to appear someone who says when we make plans, we need to have contingency. We need to plan on more than one thing at a time. And to revisit the same question, whether it's the trestles we discussed at the last meeting, looking for only one specific use instead of a multitude of uses. I'm, I'm curious, is the concept of rail banking as outlined on option A going to be reintroduced for other segments? The commission could consider rail banking at any time and, and called the question, I would say, that would be at the discretion of the commission. What staff has done is try to describe where rail banking would be needed in order to advance certain alignments, and that that would be the commission's decision to direct staff to advance uh, rail banking. I appreciate that. I think it's good to outline in the options going forward what would be the prerequisites to pursue the option rather than narrowly pursuing one option. Can you think of anywhere offhand or else rail banking might facilitate the development of this project? It would, if you're trying to develop the interim optional trail, then rail banking would facilitate the development. If you're in, uh, um, there is a component I discussed in my staff report related to um, reconstruction of the tracks as part of the trail projects. And if the commission chose to rail bank and still pursue the ultimate trail configuration, that would eliminate the need to reconstruct the tracks as part of the trail project. So that's a role that rail banking can play in development of the trail. Appreciate it. Commissioner McEwen. Thank you very much. There's been a great deal of concern from uh, county staff about the time extension jeopardizing the CTC grant. Um, but at our last uh, RTC meeting, um, Executive Director uh, Weiss noted that the CTC approved um, 18 time, 18 month time extension for active transportation projects last year in June. Um, and with that, he noted that he did not envision a short time extension jeopardizing this project. Um, so my question for the director, um, what would damage our reputation with the CTC more? Asking for a time extension now or entering into a baseline agreement, spending two million on final design money, and then a year from now saying we have a problem and asking for more money for a time extension then, uh, as well as we request a 12 month time extension then we'll have the results of um, the 9 million passenger EIR uh, before making a decision on this, correct? Just wanted to clarify. Um, so to be clear, 
a, a, a time extension to the California Transportation Commission is a discretion, discretionary action by that commission. Um, that said, um, there are many more that are approved and they are seldom uh, denied unless there is a, a very good reason. Um, one of the reasons that, that we saw in my time there uh, that was typically approved were, were agencies facing a cost increase and looking to figure out ways to, to, to plug that hole for the cost increase. Um, in terms of being uh, considered problematic for an agency delivering future projects and a time extension um, I don't think would be viewed as, as, as problematic. Failure to deliver the project is I think what is viewed as problematic. If, if, we, if we get to the end point and say, we're gonna get back the, the, the funds and sorry, we just couldn't do the project, I think that jeopardizes how we're, how we're viewed in the future. Um, but time extensions before that point are less problematic. One uh, additional question. Um, do we anticipate <clears throat> learning anything in the passenger EIR uh, that could impact segments 10 and 11 um, of the project? Um, just wondering if you know we anticipate learning anything in the passenger rail EIR um, that could you know potentially impact uh, segments 10 and 11. So it, um, in working on the, the zero emission passenger rail and trail study, um, it is possible that we would, what we are endeavoring to do is to look at how we address that in ways that have a minimal impact to projects that are ongoing. All right, a last call for questions from commissioners. Sure, go for it that, um, sorry, I wanted to mention that the County of Santa Cruz and City of Santa Cruz trail project managers are working very closely with RT staff, RTC staff on the zero emission passenger rail trail project. And we're tackling these kinds of questions specifically up front. Um, this is particularly actually important for segment nine, which is advancing into final design, but it's on the forefront of our minds to minimize impacts to ongoing projects, as well as trying to maximize any advancements the trail projects have to um, accommodate future passenger rail service as envisioned in the um, zero emission passenger rail and trail projects. So we'll be seeing some of that information come forward to the commission in late summer um, when we look at the conceptual alignment. So we are coordinating very closely and aware that there's two um, parallel design efforts going. Thank you. Um, so we are now going to open up for public comment on this item. I want to make a, a brief uh, statement, I, I, maybe a plea for folks to um, really try to stick to the, the policy questions here. And, um, you know, I know feeling, you know, people have feelings. I too have my feelings about uh, what's going on. Um, I think we're going to have to pause for a moment uh, because we're having a little bit of a um, disruption over here. Ex uh, sir, yeah. sirs, it, um, I, I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to give Mr. Peoples the, a little bit of leeway here, um, because he, he was speaking more broadly to, and, and this is tricky with oral communications and, and some of our items. I'm going to give Mr. Peoples, uh, the, the leeway here to, to comment, but if I could just finish my, um, my, my point about uh, tensions maybe being high in the context of this meeting. And um, I, I just wanna ask everybody to, to try to focus on the issues um, and, and not the, um, the messengers and or uh, decision makers, the, the, the person, the people, right? The individual. So um, let, let's go ahead and, and, and try. Give it a shot here. Um, Mr. Peoples, you're up. You've got uh, two minutes. We'll go um, with folks in the room and then to online. And Thank we do you. have quite a few people online who are probably going to want to speak. So we'll just keep moving. Th Thanks. Thank you, Brian Peoples Trail. Now we submitted comments uh, included in attachments. 
um, as we saw from the rail consultants, most all of the trestles have to be torn down for future passenger trail. What's more important is that the setback requirements for the ultimate and the train would require the ultimate trail to be realigned. So the ultimate trail is not in a permanent location. It is not in a permanent location, so let's not invest that. I also want to point out that um, Grace mentioned that cost segment nine haven't been totally shown yet. So you got some more costs coming. Segment seven was over budget, and segment five is likely to be more over budget. So those costs were not included in the cost numbers that were shown. At the end of the day, Watsonville, you're never getting a trail if Santa Cruz spends all of our money. And we really need to build the trail all the way to Watsonville. So those Watsonville representatives should really step back and say, hey, why am I wasting all my money on Santa Cruz and we get nothing? You get nothing. If they follow what Guy Preston recommended years ago, which was rail bank it, you'll have at least a gravel trail probably before your term is up as supervisor, uh, Hernandez, believe it or not, you will. You will get it. If we rail bank it, pull the rails, at least get a gravel trail there. Guy Preston recommended this years ago. He recommended it. Again, his last statement at the last meeting, he said in less than two years, the rail banking would process would be done. So please approve and move forward with the optional rail trail. Thank you. Wait. I'm gonna ask folks to exercise a little restraint here. We wanna just keep moving as quickly as we can. Thanks. All right, no, no booing. Uh, it would be great to just not hear the booing and clapping between each speaker. We recognize your, uh, your feelings. Okay, next up. Hi, my name is Christine McGill and I live in Castle Rock Estates. I've already explained moving forward with the rail trail, how it would affect low-income homeowners and other people in general. I would really like to know if you have a study on how many people would actually use the trail and the rail for what reasons. Santa Clara County has the light rail that operates in Fremont, San Jose, Santa Clara, and it goes in the town to businesses and everything. And when I go by there or whenever I see it, it's empty. It's like the buses here. Nobody uses it. Um, I just have a quick question though. If you, what, first of all, why are we continuing on this path when we're $28 million short in funds and the, and that doesn't even include the train trestles that need to be rebuilt to hold in case there's a freight train that goes over it. Um, one second, let me ask you a question. If you were building, doing an addition or building a home and you only had $10,000 and the house was going to be 1 million to build or do whatever, would you continue working on that? And just think that, well, maybe I'll live with my house half done. Um, and then the last thing I have to say is, why are we moving the low income people out of the stage when funding and the de design hasn't been completed at this date and it's so far off? Please go forward with the interim trail so our homes don't need to be split down the middle and moved. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, good morning, Aurelio Gonzalez from the city of Wattsville. Uh, I just wanted to make a clarification. Uh, Lowell Hurst said I was the mayor of Wattsville. Uh, I'm not the mayor of Wattsville. I would have been the mayor of Wattsville if I would have stayed on my seat, but unfortunately uh, circumstances didn't allow me my life. Uh, but anyways, I'm here today speaking on behalf of uh, city of, not the city of Watsonville, but as a resident of Watsonville, I'm also on the committee of uh, the general plan for the city of Watsonville. And we actually spoke about the rail and the economic development and the impact it could have 
with our community. And uh, we think it's, it's a positive thing. Uh, also the rail and a gravel rail trail only, I think that's an insult to the residents of the city of Watsonville. Um, so as, it, as the staff has reported, there's no money just for a trail only. Uh, as a taxpayer, I wouldn't support just a, a trail only. Uh, it's exorbitant amount of money that would be wasted for a few bicyclists maybe that will be utilizing it from Watsonville to Santa Cruz. Um, and again, the city of Watsonville on the committee, uh, again, we spoke about the, the rail trail, we support it, and we think uh, it's gonna be beneficial for the city of Watsonville. Uh, let's not put aside the, the, the usability of the rail for us, right? Uh, and also, I think we should move forward and expedite uh, the trail segment 18 for the city of Watsonville, which would be more really beneficial for the city of Watsonville because it would help us try to complete our trail segments that we have within our sphere of influence, uh, which is really vitally important to us because it connects us to the Santa Cruz Land Trust property uh, that they're gonna be developing. And hopefully that would be a, a magnet for uh, tourists. Tourists in Watsonville would be a great benefit for the community. Uh, again, let's not exclude the city of Watsonville and the tourism industry. Uh, even though we are the backbone in the hospitality workers for the city of Santa Cruz and the county of Santa Cruz. So again, thank you for your support and let's move forward with the rail trail. You see support it. My name is Barry Scott and I live in Aptos and I want to uh, thank uh, former Chair Gonzalez for his comments and I agree completely with them. I need, I need to uh, remind everyone the staff recommendations from the county and the staff recommendations from this RTC were the same. We need to do this, do this today. Only this morning did I hear about this, spending 2 million to advance another interim trail study idea. Don't do it, oh my God. Let's put an end to the interim trail. Let's respect all of the promises that have been made. And let's remember that we are connected to the region at, at Watsonville Station, the dream has always been, has always been rail with trail, with the rail part being the most important part. So please today pass all of the recommendations. And uh, I also hope that the RTC will become the lead agency. Thank you. All right, next speaker. Hello, my name is Barb Rabb. I'm 71 years old. I live on 17th Avenue in Santa Cruz. I regularly bike to Wilder Ranch and Sea Cliff Beach with friends. To do these rides, I must ride on surface streets with cars, which can be scary and dangerous. It would be a wonderful and a dream come true to bike about an eighth of a mile to the railroad tracks at 17th and then be able to ride car free in either direction. To get to the bike path off of Bay, I currently must bike on 17th Avenue, Bromer, Broadway, Front Street, up near the boardwalk and some of Bay Street. All of these streets have high volumes of vehicles. Once on the bike path, it is relaxing and stress-free. The citizens of Santa Cruz County have already voted their approval and desire to have the bike pedestrian path to be constructed in a timely manner. Using construction grant funds already secured as a sensible and logical path forward. The community has already strongly decided against rail banking. I respectfully request that this commission utilizes all its power, influence, and decision-making capabilities to ensure that the voices of our community are acknowledged, respected, and supported by moving forward without any further delays, the completion of segment 10 and 11 of the trail. Please help. Your efforts in this regard will be deeply appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Bennett Williamson. Uh, I live in Felton, so I biked over here today and I wanted to speak to um, Commissioner Johnson and McPherson um, in particular. Um, it's really hard to bike here from Felton. It's really scary and dangerous and intense. And that's why you don't see a lot of people riding around um, the San Lorenzo Valley. You know, we have a really good active transportation plan that talks about the future um, that I really believe in and will help people like me bike to work in the city of Santa Cruz, which is really what all this is about in the long run, right? We need to change the way that we get around to meet our environmental goals. So 
I was really disappointed um, in the commissioner's vote at the last meeting. And so I want to take some time off of work and school this morning just to come make a brief comment. Um, I'm asking you to vote in support of the staff recommendation. They've done an amazing job. They got the biggest grant in the history of the state in support of this project. I think that lends a lot of weight to knowing that, of course, there's going to be more money needed going down the line, and they've obviously demonstrated how good of a job they can do. So I think it's a vote of trust in the staff and also really listening to the, the votes that we've heard from the people to continue this project right away. It is going to make us more competitive for the future grants, as staff said. I have a colleague who um, lives in uh, Pleasure Point, and they bought an e-bike to work at the county, and they rode on the streets twice and got almost sideswiped, and they said, forget it, I'm going to drive. And with the trail in these next segments, that's exactly the person that we want to feel safe um, riding to work. And that's one less car on the road. So uh, yeah, I really just, again, ask you to support the ultimate trail design and understand that this is part of a regional impact because someday D5 is gonna need funding too for our goals. And I think all the other commissioners are gonna understand that they're gonna support D5 as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Anna. I live on the west side of Santa Cruz, but I've grown up in this county, so lived all over. Um, I really wanted to say thank you to the RTC staff for their amazing report, and also thank you to the commissioners for taking a lot of time to consider everything very diligently. I think that's important. Um, I really support the ultimate rail and trail plan. I think having lived in this county my entire life, I see how the traffic has just gotten worse and worse, and I have been here through many highway expansions that have done very little. I think we need public transportation and we need space for active transportation. I use the segment of the trail that's by my house every single day. My partner uses it every day to get to work. Um, it's crucially important to our county. The number of car accidents and bike accidents is not acceptable. Um, I think it's really important that we move forward with hope and vision for the future that our county can have a wonderful public transportation that's more eco-friendly and also safer for our community and more enjoyable. Walking on the path is so enjoyable. I would also like to just real briefly second a comment that was made earlier about the buttons on the paths that it is, you either have to get off your bike or step into the road to press the buttons and that isn't safe. Um, so that would be something to improve what is already a wonderful path. So um, thank you for your time. Thank you. It's Faulkner, you're up. Thank you, commissioners and staff and Grace. What a, an amazing presentation. Uh, my name is Lonnie Faulkner, speaking on behalf of Equity Transit, and I'm also a resident of Live Oak, where segment 10 is planned. Uh, the ultimate trail is critically important to so many community members in my district and the county. And we encourage commissioners to vote yes and approve all staff recommendations, including affirming support for the ultimate trail configurations for segments 10 and 11 of the Coastal Rail Trail and adopt all findings, overriding considerations and the mitigation monitoring and reporting program. To those commissioners who've used the mantle of we just want a greenway and are now instead saying we just want an interim trail to stop progress of the rail, enough is enough. The proposed greenway trail was a 26 foot wide, 32 mile long asphalt road, which would have been the greatest environmental disaster of all. And the terrific failure of Greenway's Measure D in 2022 clearly showed that a majority of our community does not want to rip out the, or disable the tracks and destroy our progress on moving forward with passenger rail as we build our trail. Based on the failure of Greenway's Measure D, the RTC staff moved forward asking for and receiving the largest ever state grant to build segments 8 through 11 of the Coastal Rail Trail. Justice was done for segments 5, 7, and 18. These grant funds are awarded for those specific segments of the project. Our RTC will continue to seek funds to ensure future segments of the trail are successfully built all the way to Watsonville. If we do not move forward with this project as per the specifications of the CTC grant, we risk losing this and all future potential opportunities to be taken seriously. The shortfalls in funds to complete the rail trail project have been evaluated by the staff and can be mitigated in the two years until the project breaks ground. We know the highway widening projects have been approved again and again, despite 
shortfalls in millions and tens of millions of dollars. Certain commissioners have chosen different criteria depending on which project they are reviewing. Thank you so much. And no rail, no rail banking. Rail banking is no rail ever. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good day, commissioners. Uh, my name is John Ross Kelly. I live in Felton. Um, a little bit of background on me. I used to work for State Parks and the Resources Division, uh, environmental protection and uh, trail construction and maintenance. I also now work for the city of Santa Cruz as a ranger in the watershed protection program. Um, <clears throat> so to say that I've spent probably a majority of my life helping to develop public resources for the benefit of the public, it would be true. My home community where I used to live, I helped create an award-winning trail uh, system within our community. Um, I just wish to put a couple of myths aside. This whole talk about rail banking, I've had, I've done so much work in trails. I've seen all the tricks. I've seen all the delaying tactics, all the distraction. Rail banking is one of those distractions. It's one of those tricks. You, you do rail banking not to preserve rail for the future. You do rail banking to rip out the rail now, so later on they won't build the rail. It's totally disingenuous to say that rail banking is a thing. Greenway's own example of rail banking, the Purple Line, if you actually read the reviews and the interviews with the people involved in that, you would see almost to a person, they said they wish they had not done it. It was far too expensive. They lost right away. They had to do all kinds of extra work just to get the rail back in. The Smart Line is in Marin County, another good example. If they had actually done rail banking, it is unlikely they would have gotten the rail through that they did. If we go ahead with rail banking for our rail here, we will not have rail in the future. Rail banking is not a thing. I would encourage you not to go down the rail banking path. The other thing, uh, the trees, the hooey about the trees, most of those are invasive, third, fourth generation trees and have absolutely no real benefit. Let's cut them out now, let's get the trail built, let's put stuff that's gonna be there for years to come. Let's get the planning done now, let's build the rail. Thank you. All right, next speaker. Good morning, my name is Tom Padula. I live in Ben Lomond. And while I do not personally benefit from a rail and trail, I greatly support both rail and trail. I wanna follow up on some comments about rail banking, however. I'm very glad to hear that the commission has pretty much shelved the idea of rail banking. I feel that this is an important point because Prop 116 at the state level provided us the funds to originally purchase the 90% cost of the rail line through the county. If we were to rail bank, there is a very good chance that we would be asked to pay back the money that we used to pay for the rail line. So we would have to hand back the approximately $24 million, if I recall correctly, to the state, and we have nothing to start with. No state grants, no money to build a trail. I would also remind the commission that the trail is secondary to the public transportation requirements as described in Prop 116. Build the rail, build the trail. Any train with a gap in it, whether you call it rail banking or not, is not public transportation. Thank you. Next speaker. Um, my name is Barb Petrie. I live in Live Oak and I am not a public speaker. So. Um, I do want to shine a light on the Capitola trussel, which I feel is being used and then having to go through the village to ride your bike. I feel it's being used as a big piece of opposition to destroy the rail line or the bike path or whatever. And I just, as an active cyclist that lives in Live Oak and rides through that all the time, that there is a bike bridge over Soquel Creek by Knob Hill it's yes, it's out of the way. You'd have to go down Wharf Road, go over the bike bridge and come back to the hopefully bike path along the rail line. But to try and use the Capitola trestle or a bike path through the village as an opposition point, I think is bad and false. So anyways, I just wanted to raise 
that awareness that there is a bike bridge over Soquel Creek and it comes out at Napa Hill in Capitol. Thank you. Mr. Sale. Good uh, morning. I live in Santa Cruz. I support and urge your approval of staff recommendations one through seven. Since 2022's 73% voter rejection of the Greenway vision of tearing out our rail line and building a so-called interim trail, our county has experienced great success competing for state and federal transportation grants. Everyone's aware by now that this success includes the largest transportation program funding award in state history, an award we now risk losing Demonstrating commitment to deliver on segments 10 and 11 will be highly influential on the California Transportation Commission's willingness to look favorably on our future applications to complete the trail the rest of the way to Pajaro Junction. The most impactful thing we can do for South County today is to demonstrate our commitment to delivering segments 10 and 11. Thank you. Thank you. morning, Carl Siebert, SoCal. Thank you all very much for your service. Um, I'm a little dismayed that uh, I, I'm for both. Why can't we have a rail and a trail? We can't walk and chew gum here right in the shadow of Silicon Valley. The money's not available. What are we, some far off locale like a Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and we just, we've got to have one or the other and people get petulant and say, well, if I won't take the rail, but I'll use the trail or, I won't take the trail, I'll use the rail. I, it, I guess we should just stop because so-and-so doesn't want the rail. I don't know. It seems to me like both in this day and age with the need for more good options, uh, again, why can't we have both? And instead of looking at it in terms of costs, why not look at it in, in terms of an investment in the future for generations yet to come that will appreciate having this option in place that can be grown and improved upon. Probably not so much on the rail, but certainly expanding the bike paths. I, for one, would use all three. So I please ask you to consider going with the ultimate trail. And uh, by the way, Addis, Addis Ababa has a wonderful little light rail system that's about the same size as the one proposed here, but they got the Chinese to finance it. Do we have to extend a hand with a tin cup to uh, Premier Z to get some money and some help and backing? Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up. Hello, I'm Jeremiah Daniels. I'm from Santa Cruz. Um, I've wrote a whole bunch of stuff down, but uh, I want to implore everyone here to understand the, the gravity of the moments that we are in and these votes. Uh, the democratic thing to do here has been shown time and time again over and over again since the 90s that the people of Santa Cruz County want this rail and trail. I'm a veteran. I'm a combat veteran. I'm a disabled veteran. I can't use the trail for 32 miles or even five miles. I saw my friends die in Iraq, and I see over and over again obstructionists and dogmatic commissioners and others who are undermining the democracy that I saw my comrades die for over and over again. As a disabled person, I need more advocacy from my leadership. I can't just get on active transportation. I can't just walk and ride bicycles. I know my whole community is, not my whole community, a lot of my community is in a similar position. It's not fair being, being ignored time and time again, and then being told, oh, we'll put it to the public referendum again. And they vote overwhelmingly in all of the districts for rail and trail to move forward. And yet obstructionists over and over again keep getting in the way instead of fighting for us. I fought for you. Please fight for me, please. That's, that's all I'm asking. Rail and trail, please accept the staff recommendation. Please advocate for all of us, not just, not just disabled folks, not just people who want to ride their bikes, not just 
Think about the force multiplier of having a rail system. Think about how this is going to change the fabric of our community and have equity and dignity and access given to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up. My name is Terry Thomas. I'm a 50 year resident of Capitola and a former planning commissioner. Reality check, putting in a freight weight Cooper E80 track is incompatible with an electric commuter train needing to have two tracks, one going each way. If there's only one track, a train may be able to go maybe four times a day because one way each trip. It's been estimated that it takes 45 minutes from Watsonville to Santa Cruz, but that only works if there are no stops along the way. Where would these stops be? or the parking for the passengers? How will commuters get to their jobs from there? At the last RTC meeting, the updated bridge report says there are 33 bridges in Santa Cruz County, all in need of various levels of repair. And I believe they only accommodate a track. So if none of them have room for a rail and a trail, where would the trail go at all of these bridges? Who's buying those properties? who would pay for all of these unmentioned expenses. The state is broke. How much more does the county expect us to pay for this situation? I urge caution, support the trail. Recreational use makes much more sense. All of you ultimate rail trail people need a reality check and I just gave it to you. $86 million ain't gonna cover these costs. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Barack. Um, I'm going to keep it short. I grew up in Santa Cruz. I live in Seabright neighborhood now, and I strongly um, support uh, the staff recommendations. Um, I There's a lot of talk of whether we can afford to do these things, and I think our current situation, I think the better question is, can we afford not to? Um, anyone who drives to uh, Watsonville past around 1 p.m., um, anyone who is uh, uh, disabled or uh, elderly trying to get around this county without a car, um, I, I don't think we can afford not to do this. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners and staff. I'm Paula Bradley, a resident of District 1 and Capitola. I was very disappointed at Supervisors Koenig and McPherson vote at the March 26 Board of Supervisors meeting, delaying moving forward with segments 10 and 11. The surprising and irresponsible action risks not only critical funding for the project, the $67.6 million grant, jeopardizing the entire rail and any trail project, but also our county's credibility for obtaining funds for other transportation projects. The ultimate rail trail is a key component to having an integrated multimodal transportation system in our county accessible to all. Transportation emissions are 70% of the county's GHG emissions. The zero emission passenger rail project would offset GHG emissions many more times than would preserving the trees to be removed. This reduction in transportation related GHG emissions with the rail and trail project is the most effective way to reduce emissions and would be consistent with the county's 2022 climate action plan. I ask that the commissioners move forward in a firm support of segments 10 and 11, as recommended by staff, finish the trail, keep the rail without further costly delays. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, I'm Alison Alami, and I live in Santa Cruz, and I've been here for the last 30 years, and I've seen gridlock increase along the commuter on Highway 1. And um, I am thinking of my children who live here and my grandchildren, 
And um, I think we're very lucky to have this alternative resource. And I would say thank you very much for the RTC. Um, and let's have the rail trail. We need alternative forms of transport right now. I am too afraid to ride a bike around Santa Cruz, but if there is um, a trail going down, I for sure will. And I will use the train when it comes. Thank you. Hi, my name is Susan Humanic, and I'm in District 1. I live in Prospect Heights and have lived there for 34 years. What I've observed, a bird's eye view of Highway 1, has been a huge increase in the congestion that becomes almost unusable. I can't go South County without really critically thinking of the time of day. I um, wanted to say that there's good data from around the state about what highway expansion does. And what highway expansion does is give a two to five year decrease in congestion. And in the next five to, uh, to uh, 10 years, there is an induced travel that causes more congestion. It's like, if you build it, they will come. If you expand the highway, it will become congested within a very short period of time. Funding has gone to auto-centric uh, investments in the short term. The long term is not being considered. What's really costly is climate change. And the climate crisis is costing this county and the state billions of dollars every year. If we want to help mitigate the climate crisis, we need to have other methods of transportation. I think to assume that people won't use the light rail is short-sighted. And the next generation is very much more aware of the environment and dedicated to helping mitigate the greenhouse gas emissions. So for all of us, I think when we're worried about cost, we have to think about the true cost of the climate crisis. Thank you very much. And I support the ultimate rail trail and I thank um, Rob Tidmore and his staff for putting together this great uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi there, my name is Tina Andrietta. Um, rail banking, one example, Seattle, those homeowners received $144 million. So let's really talk about the underlying reason why people want a rail bank. Any delay causes 6% to 10% annual increase in costs. That is why I personally think why folks that want a trail only keep avoiding this issue. Approve all staff recommendations for the ultimate trail. Don't forget about the kids. They want mass transit. They want a rail. They want bus. They are not happy being in their cars. Lastly, removing the trail connection to Watsonville is building a wall between South County residents and opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, my name is Stacy. I live in Ben Lomond. 26 years ago, I moved to Santa Cruz and I did not know this would be my forever home. I lived on Park Avenue, well, a couple blocks off of it, and I commuted every day downtown to game a lot. <clears throat> my comment is about the budget estimate. It assumes no current maintenance. There's current maintenance. There's uh, the, the, you have to do brush removal for, um, for fire. We're already on the hook for the trestles. If we're gonna use a trail, the, they don't go anywhere if the if there's no trestles. The um, there's still trash removal and there's still erosion because the, there isn't an actual surface for people to walk on. They're going to walk on it anyhow, and it's getting eroded. Rail is our only way to reduce our actual congestion to get traffic off of the lanes in the streets. I would have used the rail every day. My friends who went to university would use the rail every day because it has consistent times to get to class. This, it, we really need to vote for, for to move the project forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have, uh, I think I see another speaker heading towards the podium.
Hi, Portia Raymer again. I would just like to point out slash remind you guys and the public of a few things. One, placing a gravel trail would prohibit my ability to use the trail as well as other disabled people's. My chair can go on the gravel, but it makes it move around so much that for me, it causes pain in my feet where I have neuropathy. <clears throat> I would also like to point out that my experience with using the light rail in Santa Clara County has been very positive. And with the exception of before 7 a.m. and after 8 p.m., the trains have always been at least 50% full. Furthermore, given that an increase of 3% per year is considered normal traffic increase, anything that is done in the interest of decreasing traffic would in a few years seem to no longer have an effect. However, consider what it would be like if nothing was done. In regards to funding, I would like to remind the public that Measure D funds are not being dried up tomorrow. In closing, I would like to remind you and the public that those that oppose the Railtail project are the vocal minority. The voters of Santa Cruz County have overwhelmingly and in more than one time proven that they want both the rail and the train. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do see another person heading towards the podium. And right. it's, okay. Hi, all. Um, my name is Jacob Wysocki. I live in Live Oak, and I've been following the RTC for a few years now. It's amazing how one project can just completely uh, dwarf everything, block out the sun. This is a project that costs hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, it's going to require the removal of hundreds, maybe a thousand trees. Um, it's not going to do anything for the traffic in this county. And of course, we all know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm really sorry to go off topic. I'm talking about the freeway project here. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that maybe two years ago, maybe a year ago, there was this exact same meeting talking about the freeway project and talking about the overages. And oh my gosh, the project came in over budget. And I seem to remember Commissioner Schifrin saying, you know, I'm going to support this, but please remember this when we have the same discussion about the rail trail. And here we are, we're having the same discussion. And I hope that we can find some consistency in how we look at all these projects and let's move forward with the ultimate trail. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next speaker. Yeah, I'm not much of a speaker. Uh, I've worked on the railroad for 30 years. Okay, I've been up and down that line a couple dozen times, okay? This county, it would be very foolish to dump it, okay? To rail bank, to do anything to it, you know? We need to preserve it and and move on. And uh, the supervisors who put a block on this deal need to get off the block and let the thing flow, okay? That's what I got to say about it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any additional speakers, uh, any, anyone in the room who would like to speak? All right, we're going to take it to anyone else who would like to speak. If you've already spoken, you're set. Um, we're going to move to our online commenters now, of which we currently have 13. Give you all a sense. All right, um, it looks like Miss Mr. Hurst, you are up. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Lowell Hurst, and I do live on the west side, the west side of Watsonville. And I want to uh, thank uh, former RTC Chair Gonzalez for his corrections. You know, Aurelia would have been a great mayor, and, and hopefully there's uh, an opportunity for him to, to rejoin the council and become mayor someday. He knows a lot about RTC, obviously, as a former chair, and he has uh, studied the issues well. The issue before you today is to get the funding, to, to get the funding or not get the funding. So I'm sorry to hear that you might have to request an extension because I think that does delay the process some, <clears throat> but I'm also glad to hear that that doesn't sour the uh, deal with uh, uh, future funding sources or, or uh, taint our uh, ability to get the project done. 
but it looks bad and it shows uh, that we might not be know what we're all doing here or that it's weak or uncertain or we might not have the will to move forward. But you do have a good plan. And I think that uh, you can secure the project funding if you act on it. And so I'm urging you to act on it, to be brave, to be bold, to take action, to serve all the people in the county and the community and move us forward into a better future, a better transportation future. And that pursues all funding opportunities, all funding opportunities. So support staff's recommendation and I say thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Vernazza, you are up. I got the pronunciation right this time. Okay. If you build the ultimate trail, you'll, you'll build a public nuisance. And the first duty of a public official or public agency is public safety and necessity. The trail, ultimate trail does not classified as a class one Caltrans defined trail, which covers all the safety issues. If it was the 12 feet would shrink to eight feet and that's not enough to take the 500 to 600 peak traffic estimated in 2019 between Santa Cruz and Capitola. I believe this is a north south south civil war developing because the south is being taken to the cleaners by the north and won't get anything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Cami Corbin. Well, good afternoon and thank you so much. Um, hopefully you can hopefully you can hear me. We can. Oh, great. Thank you so much for having me. I, I greatly appreciate it. I just want to say uh, I'm 64 years old and my family's been in Santa Cruz for 100 years. So I do know a little bit about a little bit, as Robert De Niro once said, huh? So what I want to talk about today really has not been chatted about. And I don't want to go over the stuff that's already been chatted about because I'm sure you're inundated with that and your mind's going bonkers and you could really probably need a little break on that. But what I want to talk about is Measure D and funding. And I want to... I want to reiterate that at the time Measure D was passed at the 73%, there was a lot of information that was not given. And one of the examples that I would like to give uh, affects me and many of the people that I, I live around. RTC, when they bought the property well over 10 plus years ago, did not have a boundary survey done until I believe it was early last year in 2023. 10 years later, plus years. I mean, who buys a piece of property, has a boundary survey done 10 years later? I know I wouldn't buy a house here and have that done. So apparently during this allegedly having this done, this boundary survey, it is now uh, apparently that we, we've got an encroachment going on and all the people in, on 10 and 11, which is causing a great uh, stress and, and discomfort, obviously. So RTC gave notice to us in late 2023, just a few months ago, when the residents along the trail that by 2025 that they would move fences and houses and uh, encroaching at our costs. This was not known at the time of Measure D and probably would have changed the outcome. We're not against the uh, interim trail and we wanna see that, but we will fight the ultimate trail and we will seek some legal counsel uh, in doing this. So I thank you for your time and uh, please vote accordingly. Thank you. Our next speakers are Michael Lewis and Jean Brocklebank, or one or the other of you. Good morning, commissioners. There are indeed two of us here, and Jean Brocklebank will speak after my comments. My name is Michael Lewis. The FEIR findings of facts and the statement of overriding considerations before you are flawed documents that should not be accepted or approved as written. If the RTC were to endorse these documents, it would be complicit with the misstatements of facts, erroneous assumptions, and unsupported claims. Just for example, the draft EIR incorrectly described Alternative 1 trail only as permanently removing the rails. 
Removal of the rails cannot be considered permanent as they can be rebuilt at any time in the future. The staff reply to my comments on the DEIR acknowledge that removal of the rail cannot be described as permanent. However, the final EIR alternative one analysis retains the permanent removal error and declares that alternative one is infeasible because it precludes future rail and does not meet objective two of the project. And this is false. The findings of facts includes the revised alternative one description from the FEIR, but it repeats the misstatement that future rail is precluded and does not meet objective two and is declared infeasible. This gives the impression that alternative one was carefully crafted as a straw dog to be summarily dismissed as not meeting the project to objective. Resolving these problems is critical at this point because there's so much misunderstanding, as you've heard this morning, in the general public and in the press, and future project approvals will be based on this misinformation. Please very seriously consider and address these concerns this morning. Thank you very much. And now Jean Brocklebank will speak. Thank you. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, first, grants are never used for maintenance. That's why we have so much unmaintained, deteriorated infrastructure in the county. Secondly, as stated in today's staff report, the RTC will only vote to quote, affirm support for the ultimate trail configuration because the lead agency under CEQA is the county and the County Board of Supervisors has not yet approved what configuration it supports. It only certified the EIR on March 26. Third, the proposed project is the ultimate trail. However, the ultimate trail includes an optional first phase interim trail. Therefore, it is possible for the RTC to vote today to affirm support for ultimate trail configuration, including the optional interim trail. Fourth, I'm a resident of Live Oak. Cutting down 803 trees, more really, because smaller trees are not included in that 803 inventory, is absolutely unacceptable. The EIR identified this as a significant, a very significant impact. We all know that. And lastly, a bicyclist earlier spoke and said she rightly feels, would feel much safer on a car-free trail in the corridor. Wouldn't we all? I remind you that she will feel just as safe on the optional interim trail. And so I'm looking forward to the RTC uh, voting today I have no problem with uh, items number five through six or whatever, two through six or seven, but reminding you that the optional first phase interim trail is still very much alive. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Michael Saint. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair Brown, and good morning, Commissioners Michael Saint, CFST, uh, and an Aptos residents. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank staff and Grace Blakesley for the wonderful presentation today. Also, very involved. I may have to go back over and check that out again. Um, and I want to thank Grace for actually emphasizing uh, CEQA's importance in all this. I would recommend all commissioners uh, pull out a copy of CEQA and uh, read it so they can have some more understanding of what they're supposed to be doing. Also, I'd like to support Sean from uh, Watsonville and Mr. Boggs during uh, oral communications. And this is an obstructionist movement, whether you like to believe it or not. And I'm glad to hear other public members agreeing with that. Uh, and I'm very disappointed that Mr. or Commissioner McPherson and Koning are not here this morning. A lot of people ask, why do we want to continue the rail uh, service? Uh, the reason we want to pursue that is because the highway widening Ox Lane project will fail uh, to be able to handle future congestion. The bus on shoulder hybrid uh, effort is also not very functional because it'll be in with cars as well as buses. 
In five to 10 years, Highway 1 will be congested again, and we won't have any other alternative available to move people in this county. If you don't provide us with some form of mass transit on the rail corridor, you'll never move people around without car eccentric movement. Highway widening does not work, and I'm glad to also hear other public members joining this call. Uh, CFST hopes you'll vote for the staff's recommendation of the ultimate trail and definitely no rail banking. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Sean. Yep, Sean. Okay. Um, So we're going to move on then to uh, Jessica. Sean, Sean Good morning. Continues. Good morning. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Jessica Evans, and I'm a resident of the city of Santa Cruz. Um, I First of all, I just would like to express deep gratitude to the staff of the county and the RTC who've worked so hard to um, continue to find a path forward for a project that is incredibly important to the quality of life for the people of Santa Cruz County. And, um, you know, it's true public service. So um, I really appreciate your efforts. And um, I'd just like to encourage the members of the commission to um, approve all of the staff recommendations um, we really um, don't need to keep wasting money on an alternative scenario that would require rail banking, which would in turn require, you know, tens of years of, of litigation and, and put all of the projects at risk of having such massive increased costs that they would never get built. Because we all know that every year of delay causes a great deal of cost increase. This project is very important. Uh, to the people of Santa Cruz County. So please just move it forward expeditiously. Um, I appreciate your consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sean, we'll, we'll go back to you now. Uh, you're up. For those people who do not know who uh, Greenway is, uh, what Greenway is, it's, a, it's a referred to often in these meetings and who is uh, um, uh, against uh, building our, uh, completing our uh, partially completed uh, rail project. It's a group of investors uh, who sued the RTC, uh, you know, which was a huge, uh, uh, huge ex expenditure in, uh, in, in, in legal funding to, to defend keeping the rail corridor in public hands. Greenway is a vehicle to help exploit uh, property owned along the uh, along the rail line for investors and uh, the Owl family who own property uh, and want other people to uh, uh, to help develop. And uh, Driscoll's Driscoll's wants to get out of the berry uh, business and into the real estate business. Now, did any of them ask you what you want? Did any of them ask you to go into business with them? No, they want captive customers. A big, uh, uh, a big, and one of the one of the most important tactics in um, controlling someone's uh, someone else's money is to uh, control uh, their uh, their ability to, uh, uh, to to move about freely. They want captive cu uh, customers. Our family is in the, uh, the, the the downtown specific Watsonville planning meetings, uh, where they give lots of suggestions. Um, these people are not asking the voters what they want; they're in it for the money. And if we have to pay back the uh, the grants, that's you that's going to be paying for it, not them. I thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Rosemary Sarka. Uh, 
Um, Rosemary Sarka, I'm with uh, Roaring Camp Railroads. I want you guys to get to the vote. I just want to say that our support for the staff recommendations are underlined by our willingness to volunteer to move the rails using our resources. It's not an unusual thing for Run Camp to try to uh, work with the community and to be of assistance to it. So I appreciate uh, your efforts in this regard. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next speaker is David Dean. Yes, uh, good morning. Um, I live in Live Oak, which is traversed by segment 10. Um, it has become very frustrating that there have been so many delays in building this trail. I urge the commission to work to streamline making continued progress and to avoid these delay tactics mm -hmm. like rail banking and the others that risk the funding we have already been awarded. I urge the commission to accept all of the staff recommendations. Thank you, staff, and thank you for pointing out these important facts. Settling on the interim trail risks losing funding. Settling on the interim trail, <clears throat> excuse me, means losing consistency of design. That scope changes would require approval by the CTC. We're also aware um, that uh, rail banking would be uh, opposed both by uh, Santa Cruz Big Trees and Pacific Railroad and Progressive Rail, um, and its customers would line up to oppose rail banking of the Santa Cruz branch line. And in, pa in the past, the RTC has stated that with opposition, it would likely take more than two years these delays not just uh, um, risk the current funding for these segments, but they will result in risking funding for future phases. Failing to accept this funding and deliver on time hurts the credibility of the RTC for future grants. Please move forward with rail and trail. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker online is Pauline Seals. Thank you, commissioners. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of approximately uh, 1,800. Well, we have 1,800 members, and I'm pretty sure that at least 1,500 agree with moving forward with the rail trail. On the subject of the trees, it is sad that that many need to be cut down. There could be funds from all kinds of places found to plant an equivalent number on land trust somewhere so that preferably in a four to one ratio so that we don't have a net loss of uh, carbon sequestration. The same set of people have already approved removal of much larger number of larger trees in aptos so um stopping uh see section 10 and 11 for that reason is inconsistent and unreasonable please go ahead as soon as possible with sections 10 and 11. thank you thank you our next speaker is carl auerbach myself. Okay, I am Carl Auerbach. I've been a resident. Is asking me to unmute. You are unmuted. We can hear you now. Okay, great. I'm Carl Auerbach. I've been a resident of Santa Cruz City since before the earthquake. I own a company in Scotts Valley, which by the way, we have a rather pleasant business relationship with the Ow family. I drive and I ride a bicycle. I've been a res student of the development of urban areas. One must think of these things in spans of several decades or longer. We seem to be stuck in relatively short-term thinking. Note that the entire transcontinental railroad project from soup to nuts took six years. We've been dickering about our rail system for longer than that with effectively zero progress while costs keep increasing. 
Our rail project needs to be coordinated with zoning to facilitate development of facilities around the stations. For example, our present emergency medical services are focused around the so-called off-ramp from Highway 1. It is surprising that people have not yet died while stuck in traffic while trying to use Highway 1 to reach the ER. So it makes sense, for example, if our rail and zoning laws were coordinated so that the rail would become a real alternative to Highway 1. This will be a slow process spanning many decades, but unless we get started, we'll be stuck with the present automobile-centric status quo forever. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have two more speakers left online. I'm gonna um, call on those speakers and then we're we're gonna close our, our public comment so we can get moving here. Um, but I'll uh, right now wanna recognize Gregory Becker. My name's Greg Becker. I live in South County, rural South County, and have for over 40 years. I have four points. Uh, first, I believe this process uh, with the Monday uh, afternoon, late afternoon info drop has prevented real public uh, participation and opinion formation through the press or for people organizing. Point two is that funding a rail project with act, active transportation money seems to be, in my opinion, a misappropriation, uh, an expedient misappropriation of public funds. Point three, uh, throughout this morning, you've heard interpretations of the Measure D vote, which are all speculation. They're putting words into the voters' mouth. The way we're going to know whether people want rail is act, ask, actually asking them whether they want to pay for it, not turning to the state government uh, to take care of us. And uh, my fourth point is that I've heard a lot of smears on Greenway today. I've supported Greenway. I am not an investor. I'm an old man that lives in South County and rides on San Andreas Road being passed by cars at 50 miles an hour or more. So I just want you to stop, you know, especially I'm seeing Mr. Rotkin there, to stop interpreting what people are saying. Yes, Mr. Rotkin, you. So thank you, that's all I have to say. Uh, I hope that you'll become more process oriented uh, with a democratic outlook rather than this uh, professional staff oriented activity. Thank you. Bye. All right. I um, So hands continue to come up. I want to just say that I, I'm closing public comment. We I will call on the last two speakers. Our last speaker will be Joanna Lighthill. Before that, uh, Steve Scheifer, you are up. Mr. Schenker, you'll need to unmute yourself. Oh. Mr. Schiffer, are you there? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I just want to um, follow up what Barry Scott said earlier about the tree removal. It's uh, most of these trees that are going to come out are not even native to the area. So personally, I, I think it's a, a non-issue. The, the other point I wanna make is it makes zero sense to me to, to remove tracks only to want to put them back later. That's like stepping back and stepping forward. And we know where um, I totally support staff recommendations. Thank you, that's it. You. Okay, I'll now call on Joanna Lighthill. You will be our last speaker. Thank you, commissioners. Um, I'm a bit confused today. I think your staff is asking you to commit to funding an additional $27 million to a project that your other staff just two weeks ago said may need realignment. I wonder if the $27 million 
covers the cost of redesign if necessary, or will more money be needed? And if so, where will that come from? I also understand that, you know, many have held this vision of having rail and trail within the corridor. And commissioners, I wonder, has anyone ever confirmed to you that both rail and a safe trail will fit within the corridor? The very first study to consider both together is underway right now, and you've invested $9 million in that, and I hope you'll consider what it says. And finally, um, the CTC, who is to award the largest active transportation grant ever awarded? In a recent brochure they created, describes the project as having a class one trail. And unfortunately, due to the corridor corridors with constraints, the class one design standards cannot be met, as was shown in one of the slides shown in staff's presentation today. Can the RTC please clarify which agency would assume the risks associated with building a deficient trail and whether the ultimate trail provides the benefits that the CTC expects with this project? Thanks so much for your consideration. Thank you. I will now close our, our public comment period and bring it back. I uh, see Commissioner Schifrin. I'll second that. And comments. I'll let uh, go ahead and open on your motion. First of all, I want to thank the county and the RTC staff for all their work on this uh, issue. These projects are all complex for them, whether they're highway projects or uh, rail trail projects or rail feasibility projects. It's all complicated and unfortunately at all. I also actually want to thank uh, Commissioners Pearson and Koenig for pressing the pause button on this project because um, it's they didn't really oppose the project. What they did is they asked some questions and they asked for more information. I think their requests were legitimate. They raised points that, um, at least from my point of view, made me have to really think seriously as we go from step to step to really step back and say, what are we, what's really going on here? And why did the commission buy the rail line in the first place? What was the point of it? Uh, we were a funding agency. We we're a planning agency. Uh, we don't operate projects. We don't own land. <clears throat> the commission bought the rail line because there was a vision that the commission had. And that vision was that there could be passenger rail or back to the line and that there could be a trail, pedestrian and bicycle trail adjacent to the line and really make more meaningful the notion of multimodal transportation system, multimodal transportation system in the county. And that's what the commission has really, with some starts and stops, been pursuing uh, since it bought the line. And it's taken a long time. It's expensive, it's complex. 33 miles, it's not short. Um, another point that I really think is worth emphasizing is what is the sales tax measure D all about? It's about leverage. Uh, there was never the expectation that measure D was gonna pay for the highway widening or for rail trail. It was that it was showing the agencies that have funding capability way beyond ours, that we were willing to pay our share, that we were committed to trying to make it happen. And that's um, that has been a very successful strategy by working together with our local partners along the rail trail, uh, mainly the city and the county, city of Santa Cruz, and the city of Watsonville, we've convinced the state and federal agencies that our projects are worth funding. And we have received funding for them. As has been mentioned over and over again. <clears throat> we know, as a member of the audience who re reminded me of what was said around the highway project, that there are cost overruns. 
and it's necessary to find additional funding to make that work. I think the only real concern I had with the staff presentation is it kind of left the impression that maybe um, you have to just use Measure D. If we just have to use Measure D funds, we're not going to be able to complete this trail. It's not going to be possible. But we've been, the staff particularly, has been unbelievably successful generating additional funding. And we have several years to generate the funding if the commission and the county and or the are willing to move forward with the with the projects. We don't if we don't approve the projects, we're never going to be able to get funding. Finally, I want to really talk about this whole notion because the real choice that the commission has here is not whether to do the ultimate trail. The real choice is whether to do the ultimate trail, not to have a trail, because the interim trail is a non-starter. First of all, it would need money from the CTC. The CTC has been consistent since they gave the commission a grant to buy the rail line that they want to pass into rail on the line. One of the reasons they may have funded the extent that they have or approved the funding for the rail trail is because we have that commitment to move forward and they know the only, you know, that the trail adjacent to the line makes potential passenger rail more feasible. They are not going to approve funding that requires eliminating the possibility of, of a rail line. It's, it's delusional to think that. The second thing is the commission doesn't have the legal right to do the interim. We don't control the line. There is a freight easement that would have to be removed. We would have to initiate abandonment procedures, adverse abandonment. We'd have to have a big fight at the at the surface transport, the Federal Surface Transportation Board. They would have to approve it for the commission even to have the ability to rip up the tracks, which the proponents all uh, use as uh, called rail banking, but it really is just ripping up the tracks. That's really what we're talking about. Uh, and that's what's necessary to do the interim trail. So it's not, you know, I can understand we were willing to look at that option in the EIR because a lot of people thought it could potentially be feasible. It's not a feasible option. If the commission or the city or the county and the commission aren't willing to move forward with um, segments 10 and 11, aren't willing to support moving forward, taking a chance, trying to get the additional money. Um, and it sounds like even potentially the county approving it on the 30th, that would mean it wasn't even necessary to have an extension. Um, we're not going to have a trail. And that's what I think you might as well be honest with the people in the mid county. Say, if you don't, the commission and the county don't want to do this, they have a legal right to deny it. But to create an illusion, somehow they're going to, it's going to be possible to build an interim trail or rail bank and get the money from the state to then tens of millions of dollars that would be needed to build the interim is just leading, leading people down. So I think the staff recommendation is very reasonable. There's no guarantee that we're gonna be able to do this project ultimately that will have the money, but by approving the project or and urging the county to approve, we make it possible to potentially do it, we stay on track, try to do it. And therefore I urge the commission to support Um, I want to go to Commissioner Montesino and Hernandez. You both have had your hands up, and then I'll check back around. Um, uh, Commissioner Chair, Lind, I do have to leave in just a couple moments. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll call if if that's okay with like, uh, others. Commissioner Lind, go for it. I just was asking to call for a vote. Is basically oh, to call for a vote. Um, I don't think we can. I don't think we I, can do that. I'm sorry. I, I agree. I'll, 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 no. 
I'll forfeit my comments if she needs to vote. Okay. Well, okay. I want to. I want to make a subset. Uh, uh, sub for one um, motion to. Um, Can you uh, hold on for one? Just one moment. I want to just make sure that uh, we have got a procedural question here. So, Commissioner Lind has to leave. We'll still have a quorum with her departure. Okay. Um, and so, and Commissioner Hernandez was has has foregone his um, uh, speaking, but I, I but Commissioner Montesino wants to make a, an alternative uh, motion, a substitute motion. It sounds like we also have commissioners here in the room who ha are want to speak. So, um, without a vote to call the question, we're going to keep going here. I'm sorry, Commissioner Lind, about that. Um, Commissioner Montesino. Yeah, I want to. Mr. Mattis, do you have? Do you want to add anything before we? No, I, I would just add that I do think it. You know, um, a motion to call a vote could be heard, but you'd have to hear the. Yes. You'd have to hear that motion, but it is premature. The count. The commission has not had their deliberations yet. Thank you. Okay. Um. Onward. So my, my motion is to accept a you know one through seven with uh, with the additional direction, um, to for that ninety seven million um in Measure D transportation funds. 45 million for future development in South County segments, um, 13 through 20, 45 million for maintenance costs, and 7 million to assist with uh, budget segment um, currently under development. I wonder whether it can be possible. I'm not sure whether the commission can program funding today without it being on the agenda. I wonder if, uh, Commissioner, I'd be happy to add an like amendment. Second. Okay amendment to the motion if it's okay with Commissioner Montesino to direct staff to um, report back to us at our next meeting with information about what the consequences of doing the, I didn't get all the funding details, but with the funding, the reallocation of funding that you're proposing. Would that be acceptable to you to have that as a, I, I'm willing to add that to the I'd like to get Mr. Mattis to weigh in uh, um, if we can give that direction first. We, we've we lost Mr. No, Mattis. No, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I heard that. Oh, you're uh, here. Yeah, my apologies. Hold on. Sorry. Um, the reallocation of budgeted funds is not actually part of the agenda, but the commission does retain discretion always to allocate fundings in the manner that you wish to do it. And so um, the commission could hear the motion as it's been presented, the staff recommendations today, and could also direct staff to come back with the budget uh, consideration issues that Commissioner Montesino has requested at the next meeting. And then the commission could have that discussion if you wanted to. Commissioner so, Montesino, how would you like to proceed? Um, so we can't do it or, uh, you know, I, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. It, it's not on the agenda today to, to, to modify the budget I, in that manner. So if, um, and if you were amicable to, uh, to add, so we can bring it back to the next meeting. It's okay with the second. It's, uh, it's fine by me. Yep. Can, can we Could just ask, ask, ask commissioner Montesino to repeat that, the thing so I yes. make sure yeah, we, we yeah. all got it. I'm going to, I'm going to try to, I just like to, we've got a lot of people speaking at one time. Um, I, I just want to make, move through this process uh, clearly. So uh, Commissioner Montesino, if you could repeat your request, Commissioner Schifrin, if you could re just relay what you, how you see that um, in the current motion that you've made, and then we'll continue to call on other commissioners to speak. Thanks. Right. So my uh, my motion was to um, reserve the remaining um, 97 million um, as 45 million for future development of South County segments 13 to 20, 45 million for maintenance, and 7 million for to assist with uh, any budget segments currently under development. My uh, suggested amendment, if it's okay with uh, Commissioner Montesino, is that those requests we direct the commission directs staff to report at our next meeting on uh, their analysis of those requests and what impacts that would have if the commission approved that. 
excuse me, uh, Chair Brown, if, if I might. Yes. Uh, this, is, this is not a regular commission meeting, which is usually at the beginning of the month. Now we're in the middle of the month, so it'd be, it'd be very challenging to come back with all the analysis for next meeting. So is it okay to return to our June meeting with that? It's okay. Yeah, is that all right with uh, That's you? fine. That's fine. Okay, so was that way that Thank I you. framed it yes. acceptable to you? Yes, it is, Andy. Thank you. Okay, so if it's okay with the second, yes. the motion would be amended to direct staff to approve the staff recommendation, direct staff to come at a June meeting with uh, analysis of the reallocation request that Commissioner Montesino has made. So are we going to vote on and I it, we're, we are we are going to vote on a motion that's been made. I agree uh, with the addition. I uh, as the second on the motion. Um, we are going to now take comments from other commissioners on this motion, and I believe um, uh, Commissioner Ginny Johnson, you've had your hand up for a while, so I want to give you the floor, and then um, Commissioner. Anybody else on this side? I'll just go with you. We so just a mutual comment. I believe that the uh, substitute motion had a different second, and that was Shane, and he needs to agree to the addition uh, to Mr. Montesino's motion. Yes, he was I, no, no. The Mr. Montesino. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not understanding the procedure. What I think has happened is, Mr. Montesino, have you withdrawn your substitute motion in? A, in response to the amended initial motion. Can we get clarity on that? Yes, knowing the fact that it's not agenda, it's like um, uh, Steve says. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, so we are, so the motion on the floor is the staff recommendation with the addition of a report back on how, the possibilities of what it would look like to dedicate 97 million of, of the remaining funds to the Watsonville segments of the rail trail, plus some other stuff. Thank, thank you okay. for that clarity. I appreciate okay. that. So uh, go ahead. Thank you. So I want to thank the members of the public um, and the staff, county and RTC staff, especially for all this, your input and all this work. And I want to thank Commissioner Schifrin for recognizing that um, Supervisor McPherson has never been against rail. He has voted consistently for years to advance all of the studies around passenger rail and trail because he's a firm believer in being a responsible fiscal fiduciary uh, to the public's uh, taxes. And he wants to make sure we have all the information to make a good decision. And his vote on March 26 was he motioned to approve the EIR. Thank you for that recognition. It wasn't an anti-rail vote or an anti-segment 10 and 11 vote. It was a, let's approve what we can today and ask some questions. And um, we did pose those questions to um, Director Weiss and he's answered many of them in these in the staff report. So thank you for that. Um, really appreciate that work. I know that was quite a bit heavy lift for you and your staff. Um, and on behalf of Commissioner McPherson, I have no problem supporting most of the recommended actions today. Um, they make sense um, to move forward with um, this project and the next steps. I do have some grave reservations as a former grant writer and someone who's spent my career in this county writing successfully millions of dollars of grants for environmental causes um, and understanding what that landscape and that space looks like. I have some grave concerns regarding our relationship, the county's relationship with the CTC staff, if we have to go back and tell them a year from now, oh, oops, we, we chose the ultimate trail as our preferred, but no, we can't backfill the budget. That is not a good space that we should be in. That is not a good credibility reputation. Proper stewardship of public dollars and, and social equity and justice are fundamental to our responsibilities on this dais. We are public service and we need, we need to take that seriously. And to provide $43 million more, which is not today's decision, I understand, for segments eight and nine, because they're over budget, from our Measure D Active Transportation Program would be irresponsible, straight up and simple. We have, according to the information that's already presented, been presented by staff in table one, 
$66 million of anticipated trail and corridor maintenance costs. Um, and we have $97 million left in capacity on that Measure D AT fund. So I can do the math, we all can do the math, 97 minus 66, that's not much left for South County. Second is 13 through 20, which based on our current costs of doing these segments from mid to North County, it's probably gonna cost somewhere between four and $500 million to do 13 through 20. Even with the, even if we did the interim trail, which would be cheaper, but let's just say the ultimate trail, 400 to 500 million. Grace has told us that we would expect a minimum of a 20% match, which we need to provide locally. And where do we get that money locally? We get it from our active transportation measure D fund. So now we're talking about 20% of 400 to 500 million. So our South County segments can be built for social justice and equity. That is a reasonable ask. It's not reasonable to say mid and North County, they only get what they want and everything gets backfilled. We have to have local match or those South County segments will not get anything. That is the legitimate concern. So we have maintenance costs of 66 million. We have the need for 80 to $100 million, potentially 20% match of local grants for segments 13 to 20. We need to preserve our active transportation grant funding on Measure D. And I would have supported Commissioner Montesino's um, a motion. I think it was completely legitimate to set aside the, the remainder of that funding for South County and for maintenance. That makes mm -hmm. complete sense. Um, because as we've seen in the past, there is probably a majority of votes on this commission to rob that, that fund, to make sure those mid and North County segments get built. Um, I know it wouldn't be the intent to not get South County segments built, but the truth is they won't get built if we rob that fund and we need to go and get grants if we're gonna do segments five through 12, right? And we seem to be successful at that and I fully support that. Um, right now, mid and North County segments have absorbed eight through 11, have absorbed 46% of that active transportation fund. And I don't wanna beat this to death, but this is a very important matter for the public to understand. If we were to give $43 million for segments eight through 11 budget shortfalls from that active transportation fund, that means that mid and North County segments would have absorbed more than 75% of that fund, leaving very little for maintenance and almost nothing for South County matching funds. Um, that's not fair, that's not reasonable, and I can't support that. As a grant writer, a former grant writer, a very successful one, I would like to see us go out and leverage additional grants to build the um, ultimate trail. That would be great. Um, but one of the things that we're gonna be doing doing that is we're gonna be moving historic rails that we're not gonna be able to use eventually for passenger rail. I don't like wasting money. I don't know about you, but that's not a really good use of our public dollars. And I look forward to seeing whether or not Ryan Camp is willing to do an agreement with the RTC to do their part because those historic rails benefit one, their excursion freight, their excursion service. There's really no freight service north of Watsonville. Um, the last four rail operators have learned that there's it doesn't pencil out. It's not sustainable. I'm also concerned about the R stip and the stip money, which is about seven eight million bucks a year. We have not used any of that money up to this point, the RTC, to do anything other than um, projects, other than rail and trail projects. That's important money for potholes for bike for pedestrian paths, we need that money. It's just not enough for what, what our, our unlimited, un, unmet needs are. The CTC will not fund cost overruns. Director Rice has already, or Weiss has already said that. State earmarks are unlikely. So it's gonna depend on us getting probably federal grants. And I hope that the talented grant writers of the RTC and the county are up to the task, I truly do. Um, I can't support recommendation one today. And I can't support it for one reason and one reason only. It is not obstructional. I can't support it because it makes sense to go forward with both options and figure out the full cost of both options. And I'll tell you why. One of the things that is not in today's staff report is the cost of building the ultimate trail between segments eight and 12 versus the interim trail. I'd like to tell you what those costs are because they're extreme. 
It's important. It's important to know that the ultimate trail is going to cost $303 million more than the interim trail between segments 8 and 12. Now, maybe we'll be lucky. And right now, as we know, $46 million in the hole on that one. We have to go out and get money for that. We don't know what our overages are will be for segment 12. And we haven't done any vegetation mitigation, by the way. That is not included in our current EIR. So there's going to be even more cost overruns for segments 8 through 12 because of vegetation mitigation, which is going to be extensive with all the tree removal. $303 million more for the ultimate trail versus the interim trail. That is 58% more money. So to choose an option right now, today, and say that is our option, that is our only option, go back to the CTC, right, sign that baseline agreement, and put the county, I'm glad to hear that the county won't be on the hook. We can cancel it. That's good. We're in fiscal problems ourselves. So good. There's a, back, there's a backup plan there. But to go to the CTC in a year and say, sorry, we can't backfill segments 10 and 11 because of the vegetation mitigation costs and the extra cost overruns, um, we can't do it. We need to reserve some money for maintenance and we need to reserve some money for South County. And they're not going to give us extra money. And that does compromise our ability to do future projects. So to go back to them in a year from now with a design for both interim and ultimate trail, a couple million bucks is not obstructional. It probably is a decent use of our time and money. Two million bucks versus 303 million? That's what you have to think about. That is not saying no to ultimate. That's saying let's have a plan and we need a feasible plan. I have personally been involved with a lot of great projects that were aspirational. Many of you who know my career and what I've done and aspirational is great. Aspirational is inspirational. We want to be aspired to the highest and best use. That's what we want. We want to respond to every single one of the speakers today and what you need on this rail trail. That's what we want. That's what Commissioner McPherson wants. But if we are ignore the feasible financial constraints we have before us today, we are not fulfilling our fiduciary responsibility to the public. So I cannot support the motion on the floor. I could support all the other staff recommendations. I cannot support most of the, the first um, staff recommendation and I'll be voting no. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Commissioner Rockin, you're up next. I want to say, first of all, on the question that's not before us today about how we spend the measure, remaining measure D money, I support the lion's share of that going to the segments, the maintenance and the lion segments south of where we're working now <clears throat> towards Watsonville. I think we should spend some of that money, again, not the lion's share, but some of that money. Um, on this project to help fill the gap, just because it's, it signals our willingness to spend some of our local money for a project where we're going to go out and ask other people, or you're going to need grants from other people to make this work. And so I think just strategically, and again, I'm not talking about a lot of money, symbolic amount, but some of it, we'll have that discussion at our June meeting into how we split that up. Sorry. We'll, we'll decide how to split that up at the June meeting, but I just want to in, indicate my idea that some of that should be spent on this, but again, not the lion's share. A small symbolic amount makes sense to me. I have to say that um, I, I'm generally in sympathy with Andy's comments about the decision at the Board of Supervisors meeting by both uh, Supervisor Koenig and Supervisor McPherson. Um, to not move forward at the time because they had uh, physical questions and so forth. I know that I wrote a column about that in, the, in Lookout Magazine, um, kind of alarmed by it. If I can be, if I could fault the two of them for anything, it's that they didn't give any indication that they were sort of looking for how they could make it work, you know, as opposed to like just kill it. Because it seemed that the meeting, I was there, that they were just trying to kill this thing and go away. And I think that that was a mistake. And I think they could have been clear that that they're, we're on the path that we're on now. But I also have to say, and this is a response to Jenny Johnson's comments, 
The idea that we should spend another nickel on the interim trail is really anathema to me. The, and we're basically saying, like, we're not going to have the train. If you want to push me to the wall that there's not enough money, we can't do all this stuff, then we should have a train and to hell with the trail. I'm sorry to be blunt about it that way. That's not, I don't feel that way because I think we, I think unlike Joanna Lighthill, who was the last speaker, I, I think there's room for both. I think we can make it work. But, but before I would consider an interim trail, which means the end of the train, let's be clear about it. I don't want to spend $2 million on that. I want to spend a nickel on that. I think it's really a mistake. And so I'm unhappy that, um, that Jenny Johnson, you know, they can't support the first piece of this, you know, for that, for that reason. Um, I think that otherwise I support the entire motion, including the uh, amendment, friendly amendment, amendment change to it. Um, but I think that the, for me, the one hope that I have out of this meeting is that we end this discussion about the ultimate versus the interim trail. It is a diversion that, again, even if it could happen, let, let me just say, even if it could happen, if we could persuade people at the Surface Transportation Board to give us a, you know, let, let us go ahead, you know, and, and uh, rail bank this thing or whatever it would take all those things to make it happen. In the end, we would never have a train. And to me, that's not acceptable. From the time I was on the commission in 2012, that we, that we, we bought this right away for a train. The trail came along later. It was a great idea, but I'm not going to kill this train for the trail. I think that would be wrong. A million ways. Andy said, that's it. Thank you. Do you have any other comments? Um, yep. Uh, Commissioner Quinn and then Commissioner McKeith, and I'll get you next. This meeting has been a real vexation. Um, I want to first recognize what Commissioner Schifrin said about recognizing the fact that he's voted against things he thought would be better off than I acknowledge that. I, I do get vexed though by the fact that, you know, there's an old saying, without facts, you're just another guy with an opinion. And we've heard a lot of opinion. And I'll respectfully disagree that the interim trail is a hard stop. In fact, in the report that was submitted, the interim trail is called out as being an intermediate step and then 20 years later going to a definitive train. So I think if we read it, the interim trail is proposed as a way to get across things. In fact, crossing the Capitola trestle. I'm also vexed by the fact that we use a lot of words and don't address them. Executive Director Weiss was kind enough to send me some position papers on how transportation views equity. And we've heard that word equity, I don't know how many times today, and yet nowhere in this report is there any metric or any derivative of how we're actually going to achieve equity with this considerable spending. Because if I lived in South County, I live in Aptos, I'd feel pretty ripped off. I'd feel pretty, pretty ripped off that the people on the west side have a great place to work and that their traffic is resolved and they get their headlights and my, or their street lights. And meanwhile, I'm sitting in traffic every day where it narrows down and I don't have a trail to be. So if we're going to talk about equity, let's hold our feet to the fire and say how we're going to measure it and how we're going to address it. Because right now it's a lot of words and both sides can Second thing going back to is the interim thing is real. And I am curious about how the tracks would be physically contiguous if we move them for the most recent report. But all that being said, and I could go on, we're just a lot of opinions. And as they say, without data, you're just another guy with an opinion. We've talked all about equity. I see no metrics. And I totally endorse what uh, Commissioner Montesino said. We need to make sure that South County has access to money. And more importantly, that there's Measure D dollars to go out there and get the grants they're going to need. If, if we run dry in Measure D, we won't be in position to get the grants we need to deliver on what we keep talking about is equity. People in South County should feel ripped off right about now about where things stand. So I agree with uh, Commissioner Johnson. I'll support two through seven, but not one. Right. And, you know, sorry to drone on. You know, the equity thing is funny, and let me tell you where I come from. The organization I head is the largest provider of Medicaid services in the state of California. So if you want to talk to me about equity, how we measure access, how we measure outcomes, how we hire our, work, our staff to represent the communities we serve, I'd be happy to do it. But it does ring a little hollow to hear the word equity used here again and again and again without any measurable accountability. Commissioner McKeithen. 
I'd like to uh, piggyback off Commissioner Quinn and Ginny Johnson's comments. I do support Commissioner Montesino's initial recommendation. As someone who currently lives in Watsonville, I do pay that half cent Measure D sales tax like everybody else. Um, I appreciate Deputy Director Mendez shedding light on the critical role Measure D funds have played across, played in helping address needs across our region. However, when considering the significant financial limitations that are outlined in, staff, in the staff's report and the uncertainty expressed today about our ability to secure those additional funds for future development of South County segments, I am led to believe that South County is contributing its fair share to Measure D, but would be further disenfranchised by staff's recommendation. Not only is this inequitable, but a disservice to cyclists, rollerblade enthusiasts like myself, my wife, South County residents like my mother, who also uh, lives with a physical disability and would appreciate the opportunity to join me, ride her wheelchair along the trail. However, for the foreseeable future, we would have to drive to Santa Cruz. South County needs to be prioritized and deserves a more equitable distribution of grant funds. And therefore, like I mentioned earlier, I support Commissioner Montesino's motion as initially introduced. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Chair. So um, I guess I want to thank staff also for a pretty complete report. Um, it does strike me, though, that there are a lot of unknowns, a lot of holes that um, I think do need answering. You know, in some ways, um, I, th I thought it was very unfair for any, and I appreciate um, Andy Schifrin to kind of defend uh, uh, the two supervisors who uh, who were kind of doing their fiscal responsibility and um, determining that if there's not enough money, could we pay attention to that? It's kind of what we do as elected officials. Um, uh, you know, I, I sit here um, actually in that chair as a city or Scotts Valley City Council member, and believe me, we pay attention to the bottom line. You kind of have to. Um, so when I look at uh, some of the holes uh, that exist in the, um, you know, where the money is going to come from, and I, and when I hear, uh, you know, amounts of uh, 300 million, uh, but we need a match. Where's that going to come from? Um, I want to thank Grace for saying at least, you know, being very honest, saying, quote, well, local partners are going to have to participate uh, in uh, funding options. Funding options is a way of saying taxes, right? Taxes are uh, something that the people have to approve, uh, usually uh, not 50%. I'm not quite clear on that, but I think if, if this was going to be a specific uh, t you know, type of um, measure, bond or whatever, I think it would have to be a two-thirds vote. And that's always pretty tough. Um, and so, you know, I guess I'm just looking for a couple of things. Um, number one, benefits. Okay. You hear a lot about, you know, if we have a train, then these are going to be all the benefits of, that will arise from it. You have fewer people on the highway. Yeah, you have less greenhouse gas. You have all these things. But history is showing us that um, trains that exist elsewhere do not, uh, like, magically make uh, cars on the highway disappear. Um, and, you know, to me, if the possibilities and the future of rail were vibrant, then I, th I just don't think there would be any, any question and, and any pause that, uh, you know, this is a great idea. But the feasibility has not been declared. The feasibility of who would ride and actually take a train um, has not been established. Um, you have kind of nebulous studies of, of uh, you know, that, oh, yeah, there are going to be tons and tons of people. But again, all you have to do is look at the sister uh, uh, rail uh, product out there, and it could be the smart train, it could be uh, a, a variety of other uh, train systems. They just never quite meet the aspirations that um, are initially put forward. So I, th I think, 
people doing their job of, you know, where's the money going to come from, of being fiscally responsible, that's not being obstructionist. That's being, that's us doing our job. And so I, I, I just want to, um, again, look for ways that future funding is more um, exact, that it's more possible, um, and, you know, kind of move away from, uh, in, in some people's minds, the, the dream that all of a sudden money's just going to magically uh, appear. I don't see that happening. Additional comments? Well, if we're going to go to the vote. Yes, I got additional comments. Oh, sorry. So um, I agree with um, the motion and the motion, how it was uh, uh, the additional input from uh, Commissioner Montesino. And I just want to say that if we can keep through that we do um, talk about equity in a manner that puts dollars behind it, uh, that's what, the direction we have to take. Um, and so people talked about South County and equity today. And I hope it wasn't just for the sake of putting it out there, but for the sake of really putting equity and dollars behind all the facade of speak. So I want to make sure that that happens. Um, and that's all I wanted to say. Let's get some projects in South County. But I, I also would like, I'm just going to make a quick comment here because I'm I'm starting to, um, I, I want to, I, what I think is about to happen here is that we've lost our deciding vote and um, it's very likely that we're not going to go move forward today. So um, with the, with the, yeah, I, I think so. You count. Okay. We'll see. Um, but it, uh, just in, in, I support the motion. Um, I, I, I believe that um, we have had this same conversation I mean, I can't even count anymore. It, it, it is literally Groundhog Day um, every time this comes up. And every time a commissioner who is, is opposed to uh, rail has an opportunity, there are machinations and, and um, kind of another, uh, you know, something to gum up the works. And uh, frankly, I am... <laughs> I am getting to the point where I just want to ask my colleagues, if you oppose this, wh why not just be um, honest and and make a motion to return that money to the CTC? Because that is what the reality is. If we continue to debate this um, in this way and, you know, and it just depends on who shows up at the RTC meeting, that is not a way for us to conduct, um, you know, the people's business. So, um, I am very frustrated. I have tried to be um, polite and I try not to take too much time during these meetings um, because I feel like a lot of it has been said. Um, but that I did want to say today. I do feel that obstructionism is occurring and um, it, it's very frustrating and we'll see where the vote goes. Um, but I, my guess is that we're going to be back doing this again next month. I'm not going to predict the outcome of the vote. Um, but but let me see, say that voting in favor of the motion on the floor is not going is not the final decision on this project. All it does is move it a little bit further down the road. It isn't clear how much additional Measure D money will be needed to make segments and that's what this motion allows is to find that out. I'm not, I'm, it's been frustrating to me over the years that we haven't gotten a proposal for um, segments in the South County area. The explanation we've gotten is that it makes sense to start at the center of where the population is because that's how you can move that there's actually a demand for uh, for the service for the line for the for the trail, and because that's where most of the people live. 
going from Aptos to Watson Hill is, you know, we're going through an area that's not very popular. On the other hand, it's critical in terms of having connection between Santa Cruz and Watsonville. I totally support it. I accepted the amendment to the motion because I think it does really pay to look at uh, what it would take to do that. I know it's being considered in the rail study, but it makes sense to look at whether additional funding from the Measure D should be put on it. But let me just make one point of it. If 10 and 11 doesn't go forward, if segment 12 doesn't go forward, there'll never be the rest of them going to Watsonville. Who's going to fund it? It's going from Watsonville to nowhere. And therefore, you know, the, this has to be a continuous trail. If it's not a continuous trail, so I've, I think it's kind of disingenuous to oppose the motion on the basis that we want to really give more support to South County because that's not going to help South County. Helping South County is figuring out a way to get grant money to do the segments in South County and having a trail that goes from Santa Cruz to South County, not from in the city of Santa Cruz and then nothing until you get to Watsonville. It's not going to make the grant agencies want to give money, and it's not ever going to lead to these, uh, to, to this countywide trail. So I am sympathetic to really taking a hard look at, you know, making some decisions about our willingness to allocate Measure D money towards those segments, because I think they're critical. Um, but I think it's important to recognize that if we lose 10 and 11, we're never going to get those segments because there's never going to be a countywide trail. And I think it's delusional. And it's disingenuous to argue that somehow that's the way to get equity, just abandoning 11. Because that's really what's being recommended because as Commissioner Rodkin says, the interim trail is, is never going to happen. It's never going to be funded by the CTC and it very well would not be approved by this. So to throw that out as an option is just to mislead the people. I think we should vote and just see where people Right. Thank you. Um, so I will now, uh, it looks like Commissioner Montesino, you had your hand up, but it's gone down. Did you want to jump back in? Thank you. Um, so I'll go ahead and call the vote. Commissioner, okay. Commissioner McKeithen. Thank you. Um, if we could have the um, entirety of the motion with the uh, recommended the friendly amendment relayed once more uh, for clarity purposes, I would appreciate it. So you'd like the, the first page of the staff report read out loud? Because that's no. what the motion is. Oh, okay. The motion is to approve the staff recommendation on, I think it's page one of the staff report with the amended motion that uh, the commission directs staff to return at our June meeting with an analysis of allocating measure the measure D funds that were outlined by Commissioner Sino for the South County rail rail segment. Did I get your motion correctly? Your amendment? Yeah, Commissioner also referenced the allocation for the maintenance as well, too. As I recall, Commissioner Monsino. There were there were two tranches. And then there was a, a modest amount that was left over, but the commission will have full discretion to talk about all those things. I just want to make sure that that's that's what I understood, Commissioner Bunsen. That's Bunsen's the intent change. of the motion. Yes. Okay. Any additional comments from commissioners? They they seem to keep coming. <laughs> Commissioner, oh, Johnson. let's call the question. I call the question. I want to make a motion all to right. call the question um, already. I'm going to second that motion. Let's take a vote on calling the question. This is, <laughs> I'm seconding that motion. I'd like to take a vote on calling the question. Otherwise, we're going to be here all day. I, someone needs to have the last word. So I feel like. I, I don't need yep. to make a comment. We don't need to vote on All right, let's go ahead and take, let, we don't need to call the question then. Thank you. Um, so we are ready for a roll call vote. Com yes, on the staff recommendation plus the addition that Andy, that Commissioner Schifrin just read into the record. Commissioner Sandy Brown? Aye. Commissioner Randy Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Montesino? 
Yes. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Alternate Quinn? Commissioner Alternate McKeithen? Commissioner Alternate Ginny Johnson? No. Commissioner Pegler? Yes. Commissioner Rotkin? The motion passes. Thank you. That'll teach me to count votes for the meeting. And uh, so I want the next <laughs> the next RTC meeting is scheduled for Thursday, May 2nd, 2024, 9 a.m. at the Capitola City Council Chambers. Thank you, everyone. We're adjourned.